Glorious and victorious Marcus Garvey Day to all. Please take your microphones off mute and greet me. Let me know that you can hear me. Yeah, yeah, race first, brother. Race first. Being from Toronto. No question. <laughs> the, the mighty Toronto UNIA, the mighty Toronto Garveyites are in the building. Race first from St. Louis, Missouri. Hey, now that's what I'm talking about. Glorious and victorious Marcus Garvey Day to you, sir. St. Louis in the house. Give me your name again. I'm just trying to see you in the chat from St. Louis. Robert White the third representing Division 421. Fair enough, man. I shake. I shake. I shake. We have a we have one of our very special guest on the call right now. Brother Roy Anderson. Yes, sir. Can you hey. hear me? Looking like, listen, <laughs> I don't know how you got that, that back. That background is a fish show, man. That's a real background there, my brother. That's a real background? That is a real background. That's my office. Man, that's what's up, brother. That's what's how up. How you my, doing? I, you know what? I'm feeling victorious and glorious on this Marcus Garvey day. Nice, nice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, and I'm, listen, I'm, I'm still on you? cloud nine. You gotta be. I can't wait to. I can't wait to talk with you about what that was. I mean, it's an amazing, amazing, amazing privilege and honor to have you on the call right now after the screening. You know, because when you when once you get a live audience reaction, you know that's when you really get that feedback, right? There is no um, what do you call it. There's no substitute for a live audience. No, there's, there's no faking it. No, no. There's, there's no faking it. So the fact that you are, you know, post your first screening, um, you know, the energy has to be electric. Um, you did it in Harlem, first of all. Yes. Like, just just being in Harlem alone, right? I mean, this is where Marcus Garvey, this is where he showed up. Yes. Right? This is where he went to. Just like when we watched Coming to America and they spun the globe and they said Queens. <laughs> Yes, yes. You know what? Marcus Garvey did the same thing. And he said Harlem. You know? And we, we were right there on 135th, my brother. Unbelievable. I, you know what? I can't wait to get into it. And I will almost feel myself getting um, caught up. And so uh, let's save all that good stuff. Um, but first of all, I want to thank all the people who are tuned in right now. I mean, this is a very impressive showing of who's who, um, some very special guests. We have, uh, you know, Elder Norman Otis Richmond, who is on the line with us right now. Um, yeah. a, a, an absolute well, uh, African treasure, you know, when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to history, when it yeah. comes to advocacy. Um, I mean, there is no one, I mean, he, he is able to speak for those who cannot, who are no longer walking this earth. Yes. yes. Right. And the fact that he carries their stories he, he carries their worth as well. He carries their value as well. So he is compacted of, of all the value you can think of, man, for historians like myself and people who appreciate um, the greatness that came before us. So I'm, I'm grateful to have him on the call. Um, and, you know, we have representatives from the UNIA, from Toronto all the way to St. Louis. Just, wow. and, this, and I tell you what, this is a, this is a very... This is one of those days where if you want to drop a movie, you don't want to drop a movie today because there are so, you know, like you, you look at the calendar when you do certain things, you say, you know what, is there going to be competition? Is there going to be a lot of demand? You know, and Mar on a Marcus Garvey's Earthstrom, yes. there, there are opportunities and things to do all over the world. Absolutely. Because, because he is celebrated and revered um, all over the world. Um, but the fact that, you know, these people chose to be here with us today, um, I greet you. I greet you. And I, and I believe it's about 8.05. And you know what? We like to start on time. Us Garveyites, 
we actually about our time. We about punctu- you know, punctuality. And uh, you know, out of respect for everyone on this very busy day, um, we wanna we wanna get things going. We wanna get things going. And um, so I, I want to greet everyone. You know, my name is Dewitt Dewitt Lee the third. Um, I am a Toronto Garveyite. I, w- I I learned my craft here in Buffalo, New York. Um, I learned how to love myself here in Buffalo, New York. You know, Buffalo, New York is where I found my roots, where I found, you know, my my, my tribe. Um, and, you know, being born in Toronto, Canada, I was given, I was given a lot of responsibility there. And that is to transplant this sense of pride, this sense of purpose, this Pan-African purpose to my people in Canada. And, you know, Canada is the gateway to the Caribbean. Canada is the gateway to the UK. And we serve a very important role in the world. And so, and so I'm grateful to all my fellow Afro-Canadians who are on the call. Uh, if you can hear that beautiful strumming, the majestic strumming, um, that is the one and only Adam Solomon, um, one of the most recognized and appreciated musicians in all of the world. My dear, my dear brother and the minister of music for emancipation money. My honor, David, David, David Lee, <laughs> Mr. President, uh, I thank you and uh, God bless you a lot, you know. A long time ago, uh, uh, when, see, I I would introduce myself first of all. I was born in Kenya, East Africa. I came in here in Canada in 1992 um, and I, as, a, as a, any uh, immigrant from Africa, so I got into music because I was a musician, and so I played with bands here and there. But those days, um, I came to meet uh, uh, Daddy Lowe's, uh, Daddy Lowe's, and um, uh, but before before meeting him, in fact, I was playing with a band called Afronobians Band, and Daddy Lowe's son, his name is Don Lowe's, played with us. He used to play the horn, the um, trombone. Uh, so he played with us, and then one day I was uh, in um, in a uh, uh, Kensington Market. At Kensington Market, there used to be a guy called uh, Micella. He had a store there in on Augusta uh, Street, and that was called the South African Center. There, I met uh, uh, Dudley Laws and and brother Rashid. If I think most of you know him. And um, there was an issue here in Toronto about a case of, uh, involving a black uh, um, a person here uh, and police brutality and uh, about justice was not served. So I, uh, I, I accepted to, uh, uh, we, we had a meeting, uh, we were four of us uh, at a church on, uh, on Blow and Ozington there. Uh, we talk, and I got to know to know this great man, uh, Daddy Laws, and and what was he fighting for, uh, and so that was my first test here. And then one day I was play, playing music in the subway, and suddenly uh, Mr. Our President David Lee passed by uh, with his wife uh, Suzette. Uh, God bless you guys, and they directly. They came to me and we started talking. I mean, the blood somehow, uh, something there is just working to put us together. And so I got to meet with David and uh, I will get uh, together into, in, into this, uh, um, uh, the community organi- organizing about uh, the raising of the flag. And he invited me uh, to come and, and, and play at Queen's Park. So I said, ah, this is a great thing. Uh, because I get to know more of, of, of my people. But I get to, because back home, we didn't read that much the history of, uh, uh, of this Canada because most of the stuff has been hidden. But um, coming now, here nowadays, the world has changed and a lot now is in the, in the internet and the old people who have talked a lot and you who were born here, a lot of the history, though we know a little of it, and 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 
talking about uh, people like Sir Douglas uh, from Dominican Republic, uh, who was a defender also uh, for the and for the native, uh, I mean the First Nation people and Black people here in Canada. He was uh, he, there was um, a rally in 1969 in Montreal at MacGill uh, because he was trying to defend uh, the Black. Uh, students who were there and he got jailed and then after that they deported him uh, you know so it's things like that and histories i mean we have to recognize these things and i'm so um uh, i'm so um, honored that i'm involved uh, to be in uh, uh, doing this because my music or my uh, living here is not only for life for me but I have to be life to serve the others and to care and to talk about the truth as the others before us. As I said before, uh, uh, Nia, uh, Nia, the word N-I-A, first of all, uh, I'm just translating it on my own, okay? It says, purpose in Swahili, lengo, Nia, Nidamu, the M, in other words, our destination, that's the meaning of the word near the NIA in Swahili. And the first letter U for which stands Umoja, which is unity. So which is one love. And as you know, with unity, we stand together. And if a, if a nation fights against itself, then we fall. But with love together in unity, we stand together. And this day, as I, I recognize it to be the birthday of Marcus Gavi, the Messiah, a founder father of Onia, uh, who was born in Jamaica in 1887, August 17th. Uh, he was a legend and a veteran, and he died in 1940. But his legend still continues with us. And for that, I say, uh, Thank you, and in all bless. We still continue with the message that has been left for us to continue to fight, to fight for the right. Uh, though, uh, concerning uh, the uh, Emancipation Month, uh, right now it's been recognized in Canada, but we want to see the actions uh, of the government. If we want to see uh, what we are asking for, and for it to make a meaning, do you understand? I mean, it's not it's not freedom, and then and other things happen. It has to happen. Then it has to happen. We want the results. That's the only thing I can say. But I say you be blessed, you all, and I, I will perform here to entertain you uh, later once uh, uh, the president David Lee says um, Adam now entertain us. Remember, I'm gonna play for you a redemption song. And I will also uh, play Wakumbozi, which is uh, about freedom fighters, and and other reggae's, uh, a few reggae tunes, maybe just to close up and welcome an Afro pop. So I'm here for you, blessing. Thank you, thank you, Minister Adam. Um, that was powerful. I mean, I hope that we get a chance for you to just return back on what you were sharing about Nia and purpose, you know, and the fact that I've never seen the word Nia in the UNIA before. I don't know, <laughs> brother, bro, brother, right? Brother White from St. Louis. <laughs> yes, sir. Have, have you ever seen the word Nia in the UNIA? I didn't pick up on it. I never picked up on it either, King. <laughs> See, you need yeah, that you need yeah. so no, first take the, in I a first myself. No, okay. no, I understand. I understand the you part, <laughs> and the you the you is speaking to you and your own, and 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 you know, really, you is us. Yes, you moja, umoja. The you is you moja, right? It's unity. Yeah. That's us, yes. right? Yes. So he I used mean, the you and you yeah. the you and the you and I a for you moja. Well, yeah, Omoja, which is unity. Which is unity, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and just to remind everyone, um, you know, we are we are walking in those Kwanzaa steps again this month. So so the last seven days of emancipation, last six days plus the first day of September, we're gonna be taking that walk 
um, at the end of this month, you know, back to the Canara, back to our principles, um, because Kwanzaa once a year is not enough. Yes. Sir. And, and you know what? And, and, and these principles are so critical to our development as a nation, as a community, that yes. we have to find other opportunities throughout the course of the year. So I thank you for sharing that wisdom, Minister Adam Solomon. Um, and for those who don't know, Adam Solomon has the Canadian significance and equivalent to a Grammy. Okay, uh, our, you know, so we're talking, so this brother has um, worked his way up. This brother is so humble that he will play for, for pennies. He would play for just smiles and appreciation in subways in the city of Toronto. And I, I'll never forget, I'll never forget the day I first met him. Um, I was just member, mesmerized um, by his skill um, and his love for, you know, his, his music and for his people. And, you know, and, and that was him sharing a bit of Africa to us. And, you know, a lot, we, we have to find a way to make sure that people who, 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 who have, in, who have been directly influenced by the motherland, um, that they are a part of our planning, they are a part of our development. Um, you know, it's it's critical. And during this month of Emancipation Month is when when this flag goes up all over the country and all over the world. Um, this is the time to unite. This is the time to bring all of our people together. Um, I think I have a hand up, Brother Roy Anderson. Is that your hand up, sir? Yeah, um, uh, yes, it is. Um, I do have to apologize. I have to break off at 8.30 to prepare for another interview. Ashe, but I definitely Ashe. wanted to, um, to be with you at least for a few no, moments. Thank you. Thank you. So, so we, can, we can get this thing started. Um, we are going to actually, um, because this is our normal day for our UNIA diversity meetings, our UNIA diversity meetings, um, we are going to conduct ourselves as we are in a UNIA meeting. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to the dean of the UNIA. University, uh, Brother Dean himself, um, who is going to read the preamble of the UNIA, ACL. Okay. okay, good night. Thank you, brothers. I'm Dean from Toronto. My name is Dean Mordecai Small. I'm going to read Thank the you. preamble of the UNIA. The Universal Negro Improvement Association and an, Af and an African Communities League is a social, friendly, humanitarian, charitable, educational, institutional, constructive and expansive society and is founded by persons desiring to the utmost to work for the general uplift of the Negro peoples of the world. And the members pledge themselves to all in their power to conserve the rights of their noble race and to respect the rights of all mankind, believing always in the brotherhood of man and the fatherhood of God. The motto of the organization is one God, one aim, and one destiny. Ashe. Therefore, let justice be done to all mankind, realizing that if the strong oppress the weak, confusion and discontent will ever be marked in the path of man. But with love, faith, and charity towards all reign of peace and plenty will be heralded into Amen. the world, and the generations of all men shall be called blessed. Ashe. I'll say, thank you for sharing that. We are in the, um, you know, that preamble um, is of our constitution, of the constitution of the UNIACL, the Negro Peoples of the World. And um, you know what, normally I would spend time getting into that, um, but we are 11 minutes away from losing um, one of our very special guests, Mr. Um, Roy um, Anderson, and there's so much for us to share with him. So I will get right into it. But as he said, our model is one God, one aim, one destiny. Um, and in my press, in, in my opinion, that is a prayer. You know, we are reaching out and submitting ourselves to God. So, you know, we 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 are God fearing, and we are God seeking, and um, and and we we are here to deliver um, the grace to the world. Um, there's no there's no question um, of our role in the world, um, and you know, and it is because God has appointed us in a time such as this. So we give God all the thanks, um, and I thank you all for being here. Welcome to the Marcus Garvey, um, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey 2021 um, virtual um, event. Um, you know, I, I was really working with the words, you know, normally we are at a, you know, at a city hall raising our flag, you know, with a very, with, with, in, a, in a very ceremonious way. Um, this year it's a little different. And this year 
Um, this is about business. You know, we are about our business. We are in, we are in 2021. The international decade of people of African descent expires per the UN in 2024. Um, and so we are, um, you know, the time for celebration and the time for Jubilee um, has passed and this time for work. And um, one of the brothers who was doing that work, um, who was helping us push the, the, the who the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey is, is on the call right now with us all. So I want to get right to him. Mr. Roy T. Anderson, are you there, sir? I am. I am. I am. All right. So listen, <laughs> I, I, we got, I don't know how we're going to be able to achieve this in 10 minutes. Um, I don't know if you can let your, your, um, your people know that you're going to be late. Uh, a few minutes late. Um, you tell you tell them the Garveyites held you. The, the Garveyites held you, man. This is so, but we're gonna get right to it. Um, right. So I, you know, because I have to, I, I have to expedite this interview here. Um, first of all, I want to just, I guess, start off by congratulating you, not just on the masterpiece regarding um, the, the Marcus Garvey film, um, but your work in helping put our story, our history and her story um, to film. And before we get to the Marcus Garvey film, I have to celebrate um, Nanny of the Maroons, if, if I may. Um, this, this film, Queen Nanny, um, please tell us what, what inspired you to introduce this, to, to, to invest in this film and make this film a reality. Well, um... I don't think a lot of people know. I mean, in the, um, folks around me know, but you know, I'm a Maroon, a proud Maroon from Jamaica. And of course, um, growing up um, in the countryside, my father always talked about our people up in the hills and he was always so proud, you know, when he spoke about them and me being so young, you know, they, uh, an impressionable. We don't pick up on the importance of, um, of history at such young age, right? So, you know, it's as um, I get older and start to quiz some of the elders, I gain a deeper appreciation, you know, for, uh, for our culture, you know, for our history. Um, fast forward, uh, I've been in the entertainment, film and television industry for 40 years now, um, making a good, good living, but... Um, and may I just say, may I just say that you are the stunt double for Will Smith? Can I say that? And a few others, and a few. And others. a few others, but just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's just let's just say, let's put out this is Will Smith. This guy is the stunt double for Will Smith. All right, and continue. Right. So about twelve years ago, I decided that I want a little bit more. I wanted to give my life a little bit more meaning, and so I set out on this uh, personal journey um, to find out about um, my ancestors. So it took me you know, to the slave dungeons in Ghana, um, to Slave River, where they, you know. What can I do to help you? I'm going to yeah. put this in our thing. Yes. Hold on, I got it. I got this. Go ahead, I got it. Go ahead, please. Are we good? Yes, sir, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so um, as I said, I wanted to put myself in the footsteps of my ancestors. And if that meant going back to Africa, you know, where they were forcefully taken from their homeland, Yes. And, and brought across the ocean in the belly of the slave ships. I wanted to, to feel what they felt so I can, you know, bring more salience to the story. And that, um, you know, th that basically morphed into a film called A Quantum the Journey. A Quantum in, in, um, in, in uh, what's the language in Ghana? Uh, chi means a journey. So appropriately, I, I named my documentary A Quantum the Journey. And so as I'm going along, and I figured that, you know, this was going to be uh, a movie that was going to tell my story. And I thought more and more about the Maroons. And I said, wait, listen, my story is just a little small, uh, small part of it. It's their story. So they became the, the bigger story in the quantum of the journey. And I became the subplot. Queen Nanny was one of the leaders of the... the I'm not going to say rebellion, resistance. That's right. In, um, in Jamaica. They fought from 1655, that's when the, um, the British invaded Jamaica, up to 1738. And the British were not able to defeat these runaway uh, enslaved Africans up in the hills. No so way. what happened? They had to sit down 
at a table the way you and I are sitting and talking right now and sign a treaty, a blood treaty, sign an oath. Not a, not a treaty to give them their freedom, but a treaty that enabled them to maintain their freedom. So they were living autonomously up in the hills, taking care of their own affairs, right? Sure. And, you know, they gave, um, you know, um, what do you call it? Um, Toussaint Louverture in Haiti paid homage to the Maroons in Jamaica. That so these guys inspired us to do what we did, right? And I'm sure, you know, folks in America, they knew what was going on in Jamaica. So they gained added uh, inspiration from that. Um, so that, so I mean, like the whole story about Nanny, it's something that just, it's, it's almost hard to imagine. And, you know, I used to use the word, use the word, a chief is chief, 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 yes, that's right. That's right. And, you know, that's a word that our youth, our youth can't even put a picture to. Right. I mean, if you told them to draw it, they would look at you crazy. Yeah. Right. And it, it, it's something that existed in our culture and it's something that needs to be shared with the world. So I want to just thank you for, you know, taking time to not only you know, create this, you know, produce this film, but also provide the educational platform and the material yes. and the marketing and the material behind it so that people can use it as a teaching tool, as a learning tool, right? This is not just a film just no. to sell tickets. This yeah. is an educational tool that you have given the African diaspora around the world to celebrate one of the most, you know, special moments in our history, right? Where we were able to fight off and establish our independence. Now we were stuck on a mountain, and that's not emancipated to me, right? But it was, it was, it was such a, it was such, it was such a bold statement, you know. It was such a power move, right? It was a power move. Like at the end of the day, it was, it was a power move because the British they had the manpower. They were willing to risk every white life to get to us, but they realized that they just they were going up against God. <laughs> They were going yeah. up against blessed people. And yeah. you know what? Their conscience, their conscience spoke to them. So I just want to thank you for introducing that to the world. And for all of our viewers who are on right now, I want you to go to nannythemovie.com. Right? Nanny. And this film is so significant that we had to spend seven minutes talking about it. Okay. <laughs> now, um, and 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 the thing is, Nanny, the, the, right? Nanny, the revolutionary, as you say, the revolutionary. Maroon Chiefstress, she is from the same island that the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey is from. And I don't think that's any coincidence. No. I don't think that's any coincidence. And so um, what we want to do is we want to talk a little bit about this incredible film that you put together um, that just debuted yesterday to a very exclusive audience. Okay. Please tell us the name of the film. Uh, the, name, the name of the film is African Redemption, The I'm Life and Legacy of Marcus Garvey. Okay. Now, I wanted, the reason why I asked you that is because I, I don't know how difficult it was for you to pick the name of this movie, right? Like, that, that had to be a very daunting task. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was. I mean, we started out with a very simple title, you know, uh, The Untold Story of Marcus Garvey. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> And, and then, right. and, 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 so, and so, so tell us how you got to the point where you were comfortable to release this, this, this film under this title. Well, I mean, the bottom line is um, Marcus Garvey, his whole life was, was dedicated to the whole um, ideals of, re, of African redemption, to redeem Africa. You know, yeah. folks Africa, around the world, they, they, they look at it as a, a, a dark continent. They look at it as a continent that has no redeeming qualities. They look well, at they it as market, they market it as. They market yeah. it to us as such. Yeah. But they know much better than that. And, and a lot of our people, un, uh, unfortunately, buy into that. They do. So they do. which is one of the main reasons why I decided, you know, to make this film to counter that narrative. Fair enough. So first of all, listen, I, I, I'm so stressed. I'm sweating bullets over here because I'm looking at the clock, Roy, and I have, I have the ultimate respect for you and whoever else has you booked for Zoom. So 
Um, I, I'm just going to just try to take it as far as I can. And you, you just tell me, stop the wit. Just say, stop the wit, and I'll stop, okay? Because everyone on this call right now is here, um, you know, certainly to hear from you. So, and I have like at least eight questions to get through. So, um, so the film, tell us how long it took for you to put together this film, please. Well, um, we're looking at about almost five years. Okay, five years. We, we, we got to go rapid. We got to go rapid here. So tell us a Tell us, I mean, I've seen the trailer. We don't have time to show the trailer, but the trailer has Usain Bolt in it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Say, up you mighty race and accomplish what you will. It has Danny Glover in it, okay? I didn't even see Keith David's face, face but, but you heard his voice. Credit. He's you in the credits, so you hear his voice, right? So tell us a little bit of who else contributed to this film at, of five years. Of, uh, in the making? Well, we have um, the Honorable uh, Marcus Mosiah Garvey's son, Julius Garvey's in the film. So mm -hmm. you'll hear from him. Um, Maryam Samad, may she rest in peace. A lifelong Garvey, she's also in the film. Good. Uh, you know, I got some wonderful, wonderful scholars, uh, Professor Sir Hilary Beckles, uh, probably one of the brightest minds um, in the Caribbean, not just in the Caribbean, but in the world. Um, uh, Professor Rupert Lewis, who basically learned about Garvey at the, at the feet of uh, Amy Jakes Garvey in her last few years in life. Um, I mean, we, 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 there's just an embarrassment of um, richness in terms of folks who contributed to this film. I mean, Samia Nkrumah, daughter of Kwame Nkrumah is in the film. Ilyasa Shabazz, the daughter of Malcolm X. Because, you know, we want to hear from second generation of these icons, right? Okay, so let me ask this question. Did I make it into the film? I can't tell you that yet. Okay, fine, 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 fine. You need, okay. you need to watch it. You need fine. to watch it. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I can accept that. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Um, but at least, listen, it was an honor to actually shoot footage for this film, right? Absolutely. Um, and, and, and you know what? I've had nightmares since then because... I, I keep waking up in the morning saying I should have did it in my Mal my Malcolm, excuse me, my Mark, my Marcus Garvey voice. Hold on one second. I just gotta yeah. mute some, some people here. All right, so here we go. Um please mute your phone if you can. All right, so that was just a that was a very personal question. I should have saved that one for your DM. I'm sorry. Um, but I like your answer. It's big, it's, I'm very intrigued. Now listen. Um, so the film consists of so many people. You yes. mentioned, you, you know, you mentioned getting, you know, contributions from people from all over the world. Yes. I've seen the trailer. You've obviously covered the whole span of, of the globe. And so has Marcus Mosiah Garvey, right? Yes. I mean, yes. he has impacted the world. So this film right now, um, I, I guess we get right to the point. When will people be able to see the film? Hmm. All right, that I don't, I can't really control because um, we're going to try and um, do the festival um, circuit to start out. Um, so um, about the middle of next month, middle to late next month is when the film is going to make its, its world premiere. Um, I can't really give you more information on that right now. Um, the inf information is embargoed until August 30th. And All right, gonna make appearances in film festivals around the world. Um, no, I, I through until February. No, I understand the film circuit, and the minute it's screened somewhere else in a different capacity, it disqualifies it for a whole lot of different film festivals. Right. So, so I, last I, night, last night basically was was not a public screening. It was, um, for lack of a better word, it was a, a preview screening of a fine cut of the film, which is not the the very end product. So that doesn't disqualify. It you know, the world premiere status of the film. So so this is my question to you as, as a member of the UNIA ACL, right? Which is living and breathing the vision of the Honorable Marcus of Garvey. I'm, 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 I, I almost have no choice but to ask you this, this question. Um, and I'm gonna, I have some questions coming in too. So I'll, I'll respond to people who are putting in the chat. But yeah. you know, the, the UNIA ACL, um, is active, alive, and it's expanding across the globe, right? I found that um, out. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so, you know, so it's very important that we that we operate, that, that we are recognized and that, and because if we are going to celebrate, if we are going to celebrate the greatness 
of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, then, uh, then we need to actually um, show that his vision is still effective today, right? In a very tangible sense of the word, right? It's yes. not like, you know, like this intangible, you know, thing that still exists, you know, around, let's say, the, you know, like any of the, uh, the leaders of the past. But, you know, the vision that the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey had for a government um, operating, representing the people of African descent around the world um, is still alive and vibrant. So, you know, what can we do to work with you um, to work with the different divisions? I mean, we have a division right now, um, you know, represented on the call in Atlanta. Um, you know what? I'm here in Buffalo, New York, representing the Buffalo division. Um, I also happen to represent um, the Toronto division as well of the UNIA. So, you know, how can we work together to use this as a tool to introduce to the world that, hey, the UNIA is still active, it's still vibrant, it's still relevant, and that this is our leader and everything that he gave us, gave us went, while he was walking this earth, we are still using to lead us today. All right, so we have a, a website if you want to uh, take this down, it's garveythemovie.com. And we're, we're quite active on, on Instagram. Anytime there's um, late breaking news, uh, well, we were on Instagram Live last night and we're gonna take advantage of that platform for late breaking news. So uh, you, you can look for some information on the world premiere in about two weeks on there. Anytime we have late breaking news, we're gonna make sure and put it out there, you know, when the film is gonna be screened um, so that if you have folks locally, you know, um, in a locality where the film is gonna be screened, then they can pass the information off to their colleagues and they can just show up. And I mean, I think this film is going to be able to. Um, uh, um, it, it's 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 going to be able to be many things to all people. Put it this way, right? Um, very quickly, we had in our audience last night at, in Harlem uh, the Honorable Charles Rangel, uh, who for many many years in Congress was one lone voice in the wilderness, um, uh, asking for. The, the, the powers that be the party to, to exonerate not pardon but to exonerate and clear the name of of, of uh, marcus mosiah garvey that hasn't happened yet i know that um there's a congresswoman from from brooklyn yvette clark has also introduced that uh, uh in this session of, of congress so as you're as we're talking i know that this film is going to be able to be used as a vehicle to help advance you know some of those aims it's gonna it's gonna elevate um the the unia once again i mean it's gonna be seen by worldwide audiences and and what i have been told you know from young and old uh people from all levels of academia is that this film that they're seeing is is in their mind the definitive documentary on the life and legacy of marcus garvey and wow. that's not something i take lightly I, I'm, I'm honored to have been um, given that, you know, because it's it's a heavy load to bear, but I think the ancestors are, are lifting me up, you know, as I go forward. And this is that maroon resistance um, thing in me. Well, you know, before BLM stood for Black Lives Matter, BLM stood for Black Liberation Movement, okay? And, you know, that was put on paper when, when the Garveyites, um, and members of, and due paying members of the UNIA ACL, um, you know, came together in 1920 to ensure that we had um, a declaration, that we had a constitution, that we had a flag, and that we have a we had a government structure um, that was that was available for every community to embrace. And today, that that structure is still, like I said, very very active. And we look forward to being able to leverage our entire global presence as a UNIA ACL to, to back this film and to and, and I'm not speaking on behalf of you know the our president general of course um, but as a as just a Garveyite right um, I, I I am I personally would do everything I can to make sure that we can support this film and that you know what we are able to to draw people in to the UNIA because here's the thing the UNIA ACL, you know, once you buy into your pledge, once you buy into your constitution, it, and first of all, this is ancient stuff. This is stuff that's, that we're celebrating has just broke the century mark, right? Um, and so once you adopt that into your life and, and reprogram yourself to think like a Garveyite, 
you now think in this in the space you, you your mind is now in the space where we need to be right to be able to fully see we're we're emancipated and we are moving forward to create for our own to rejuvenate africa and to be able to build infrastructure for us by us so this film is an incredible it, it's coming at a time that it, it couldn't be it couldn't have been um Per, more perfectly timed, and I consider this film part of that mighty whirlwind that the Honorable Martin Messiah Garvey said, look for me in. So um, thank you so much for, first, first of all, all that you've done to be able to capture um, our history and her story um, into film so that we can use it as a tool to educate others. Um, and, th and thank you for taking time on this very special day. Congratulations on the film. Um, thank you. It's a very exciting project. Once again, everyone, GarveyTheMovie.com. Um, please follow them, not just on, you know, on the website, but on social media as well. Like he said, there are updates constantly. And before you go, before you go, sir, um, this, is, this, is, this is the last part of it. Um, so before you go, I just wanted to present to you um, the Emancipation Month Marcus Garvey Award um, to Brother Roy T. Anderson. So this will be sent out to the mail to you. Um, we you. also have a very special flag that will be sent to you as well. I'm um, honored. So, I want, I'm honored. So, so thank you. Thank you so much, sir, um, for making time and extending your time um, and giving us 11 extra minutes. Um, I, I just want to just check the chat. OK, just give me a second to check the chat because people are They're very polite. They're communicating on the chat. So we have Paul Osborne who says, yes, I am a Maroon. Yes. So you got a, so you got one of your cousins on the call. All right, one of my um, brothers. Sister Antoinette says we are so grateful. Um, Vanella says I wonder if at some point we can touch on the new marine maroon chief in Jamaica and his efforts to rejuvenate that culture and protect oh, no. protect the cop, pick, cop, um, county from mining. That's yes. a very important point. Um, it says Obama had the opportunity to grant not the pardon. I've been corrected. It's the exoneration. Yes, of, exactly. of Martin Garvey. But he exactly. didn't, and you're right. And you know what? I was fearful that Donald Trump would do it because I was like- It was very close. It was very close. I know. I was very, I was very fearful. You know, I was very fearful that he would do it for political purposes. And obviously a win is a win, but yes. we knew that win comes with strings attached and we don't want to see that happen. So, you know what? You've given us some ammunition to continue to push for the exoneration. It, he's, it's worth it. Listen, it, the family cares about it. So if the family cares about it, we care about it, right? Yes, um, yes. So thank you for giving us everything you've given us. Congratulations on, on being a recipient of the Emancipation Month Marcus Garvey Award. And um, we appreciate you, you so much, sir. Thank Can I get you. a, a I'm going to try to take a screenshot with my phone. Hold on, just one second. One second, hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to put it, I'm going to see if I can put it on like a, a wide screen. Hold on one second. So I'm going to see if I can put like full screen here and get everybody on the call. Here we go. I, all right. So I kind of got everybody on the call. Hold on one second. Um, hey, listen, if you want, if you want to be in this picture, show your face. Okay. Otherwise <laughs> you're not going to be in the picture. Okay. This is your opportunity to be in the picture. Um, brother Roy, it has to go. So activate your cameras and we're going to take a picture right now. As soon as I find where the camera is on this iPhone, I do not like iPhones. Here we go. All right. Uh, there you go. There's Dwayne. I see you, Brother Genius. Yes, Brother Robert White. Thank you. I'm just waiting. Uh, Brother Lion, come on the face. Sister Simone, show your face. Brother Norman Richmond, please show your face. Okay. In three. There we go. We got Eddie tapping in. Sister Simone, I'm going to give you a second because I got to take the picture because Roy has to go. Um, all right, who I'm waiting on? I'm just gonna assume that's it. All right, three. Okay, hold on, who's coming? All right, Athena's coming. Yes, the lion is here. <laughs> here we go. And three, I'm waiting on Norman Richmond. Norman Richmond, can I get a little visual? No? Okay, here we go. Three, that's beautiful, hold on. All right, three, two, one. And let me just hold this up, because he's gonna go. I'm gonna hold this up. Ah. All right, I'm gonna hold this up on my screen. <laughs> to your screen. <laughs> Three, two, one. Ashe, thank you so much. All right. So, Brother Roy, I, I mean, listen, first of all, you know, I tell you what, um, 
we we, we know our, our our brother, um, you know, brother OG. Yes. Um, is you know he's he's in Africa right now, right? Whole yep. different time zone and yep. you know Wi-Fi connection and the whole nine. So we understand why he's not here, but um, you know, he's so proud of you. And I just wanted to not, I just want to acknowledge him and let you and on behalf of him, let you know how proud he is of you. Um, you know, from the moment you jumped over those buildings <laughs> to to you, yeah, because that that jump is is that a world record, by the way? That's for another conversation. I don't want to. I know, the I know, but I'm just God. saying. I yeah, mean, your yeah, your your, re, your resume is serious, sir. It but is, I just it want is. I just want to let you know that we've been proud of you ever since then. Thank you from these films. Thank you for your contributions, and we're here to support you. One God, one aim, one destiny. All right. All, All right, right. We got, and we got to sign you up to the UNIA. Um, I have to remain objective because I got to tell the story. Oh, I that's the interesting. Story. I, I respect that from a journalist. I got to tell the story. All right, as soon as you're done telling the story, we're going to sign you up. I'm the young lion telling the story. Well, I tell you what, that's the first because they keep saying when the lion, until the lion tells the story, the hunter gets the glory. So we Thank finally you. got a lion telling the story. I say, <laughs> Brother Roy, thank you. All right, peace. Let me just say, welcome, Asante Sana. A blessing. Yes, go ahead, sir. Well, well, welcome, everyone. Go ahead, go ahead, Minister. So we are going to now, we are, we are going to go now into a music selection. I, I, I definitely, I definitely want it. And we, the music selection was scheduled for prior to us getting into the interview with our first guest, um, brother Roy um, T. Anderson. But um, of course we had to, um, we had to, we had to sort of be flexible with his schedule. I mean, he, um, can you spotlight the artist? I sure will. Thank you so much for sharing that with me, brother. Um, so hold on, I'm just gonna just spotlight the artist. Um, one second, there he is. Okay, so we are going to um, turn it over to the Minister of Music of Emancipation Month, um, Minister Adam Solomon, who is going to share a musical selection with us um, during this time. You know, I'm going to ask us to just, you know, me, you know, just allow the music to to medicate you, uh, to minister to you, um, and let's take a trip back to Africa, Brother Adam Solomon. Oh, thank you, President David Lee. So before I I play anything. I just wanna uh, something to recognize this uh, and talk about this, uh, just a few points. Um, Toronto, uh, where I live or where uh, is our city, uh, our beloved city. Uh, Toronto has uh, had an African Canadian population from its early days as a settlement. Its inhabitants include enslaved women, men and children, Black loyalists and African Americans escaping enslavement in the United States. It also included rural Black Canadians moving from Nova Scotia or Western Ontario, as well as people from the Caribbean and the African continent. Members of each group have contributed to the growth of Toronto as, as our unique city and to and other parts of Canada, including uh, No, he's good, he's good, he's good. He's struggling around big and stuff. And Do they mute everybody uh, up? I don't my, want to be just, just uh, My contribution as a uh, Canadian, African Canadian uh, to the UNIA organization, I want to play for you the redemption song. Uh, this tune, I've always been playing this whenever we raise the flag at Queen's Park uh, in Maswashi Day or Makaskabe Day at uh, um, City Hall in Toronto here. Welcome. <laughs> Oh, 
what in this generation Triumphant want to have to say These songs of freedom Cause all I ever have Redemption song Cause all I ever have Redemption song fighters uh, is not only uh, those who fought only by spilling blood, but also those who, by talking, uh, speaking, or negotiating for the matter of uh, truth. Uh, justice, um, equality. well treatment to the black man to be respected as any human being on this planet of earth. What, that what you, what you, thank you. Everyone, Almighty. everyone, if you could just if you could just take a moment to appreciate um Brother well, Adams, Adam, Minister Adam Solomon, just appreciate him. Um, thank you for making time for that. Um, I know you have more music selections for us, but you know that song is so profound that I just, I have, I, I just feel obligated to share a few things. Um, you know, you mentioned first of all, let's give credit to the prophet who, who's pictured behind you, Bob Marley. Bob Marley. Bob Marley. That's right. Love him because of his music and the reality that he song sang about. And he's a true legend who was born in Jamaica. He's known all over the world. One, he, an, another, another brother from Jamaica. He visited Jamaica. Africa. Jamaica. His, his foot, his foot, his foot walked on the land, Africa. He, he is yeah. definitely he is definitely one of Mother Africa's own yes. children, as we yeah. all are on this call. And and so what I want I wanted to also acknowledge that you know as you talked about emancipate ourselves from mental slavery, um, that is a direct quote from the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. And, and 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 that speech and I just must I must mention and that speech where he shared that powerful message. Yes. Um, was, was delivered in Nova Scotia, in Nova Scotia, Canada. Okay, um, yes. so as as Afro as Afro Canadians, um, there is a very rich history of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey's presence in Canada, and so it's very important for us to acknowledge that. Did, did you have another selection to share, sir? 
Yes, another uh, uh, selection which is uh, is called Wakumbuzi. Now, before I, I uh, go further, I just want to say this: as you know, all know that I'm a recording artist. Also, I have music. My music, uh, you can find it on Amazon.com or you can find it on uh, um, Bandcamp.com. In fact, Bandcamp.com, uh, and uh, you can uh, download there. So this. This song which I'm gonna play now is called Wakumbozi, which means uh, our freedom fighters uh, and uh, in Africa and in the West also. So welcome here. Yeah. Stand to remember our great Africans, Wakumbozi, our saviors. Our leaders who fought for us to be free, have freedom, which I think today we're still fighting for. If you want to to Africa, when you want to go to Africa, to Africa, when you want to go to He to Africa, So we be free. Thank you. 
Looking at your man, do what? Do it. Now listen, yes, sir. that was blessed. Listen, you got lots of claps coming in on the chat. Thank um, you. And, Thank I, you. And, and, and Minister Adam Solomon, um, I just want to just present you with the Emancipation Month Marcus Garvey Award to you. you. Um, we'll be sending you your your award along with your, your own flag like this. So you're going to be able to put a big old three by five foot flag in the in your background. Inside here, you see here? It'll be just beside here somewhere. Else. Yes. Don't worry. You're gonna up you're gonna upgrade. We're gonna upgrade that flag to the yeah. three by five, brother. It's on its it's on its way. Thank you again, Adam <laughs> Solomon, um, for your wisdom. For for those who, who who are just coming on the Zoom, you may have missed right in the introduction, Adam Solomon shared. Um, you know, a very powerful story um, that included how he met me. Um, and I consider that a life changing moment when I met him. And he, um, you know, he, he, he identified in, in the letters UNIA, in the acronym UNIA, which stands for the United Negro Approval Association. Um, he identified the word NIA in it, right? The purpose, right? And, you know, um, as we started this meeting, like we start all of our UNI adversity meetings, um, we read the preamble. And when you hear the preamble of the UNI ACL, you understand what our purpose is. 
and that is to achieve all of the characteristics that are described in that preamble. Um, and so I want to thank you for that incredible wisdom, that introspect, and your and your music that has ministered to. Yes, I want to say uh, we are welcome, and I want to say I'm with you here anytime. I mean, you know, I'm I'm here. I'm with you. So anytime I can perform here, I'm ready to perform. Uh, I'll give you more. Uh, I'll give you one more uh, tune. Uh, There's uh, a song called, you know, a few. I years want ago. you to save it. I need you to <laughs> save that song. I need you to save that song. Hey, okay, it's called it, it's called brutality. Okay, this is brutality. Oh, can you save that? Can we save that? Because I want people to uh, people going to stick around and they yeah. want to get that selection from you. So okay. this, this let's tune. save that for our grand finale. Um, because we got some people whose phones are dying and I need to get them on the call. Okay. okay. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna save that for the grand finale. Um, okay. Good. so I like to I like to take this moment um to like I said, uh, thank you, um Minister Adam Solomon. We're going to hear from you again shortly. Um, but what we want to do is we we want to make sure, and I know everyone on this call right now, um Listen. who have have embraced the philosophies and the opinions of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, made them their own. And they find ways in their own world, in their, in their own lane, to bring these principles and opinions into these different spaces. And I want to thank you all for being part of you know, the revolution and being part of this, this constant um, pursuit to not only redefine who we are, um, but also to help others around us. And so what I want to do on this, on this Marcus Garvey day, um, it's very important that we pay tribute first to a few people. Um, first and foremost, you know, as Adam Solomon mentioned, you know, we are normally at Queens Park. We are normally at Toronto City Hall, and we have our own park now. We have an Emancipation Park, which is in Brampton, you know, and since 2018, um, you know, members of the Black Voter Base, the Toronto UNIA, and Emancipation Month have been working diligently to get a, an Emancipation Park um, established in Brampton. And we finally have, all right? And this August 31st, this, yes, August, this August 31st, we're gonna have a soccer match, okay? Yeah. We're gonna have a soccer match. So if you play soccer, we're gonna have the Emancipation Cup. Um, and, I, and so we're gonna, so there's gonna be more information on that that you can find in Emancipation Month dot com um but what i want to do is i want to read some a speech from marcus garvey and then we're going to hear from the minister of information from the parent body of the unia acl who was on the call my mentor my big brother minister lion blighted so this is in the words of the honorable marcus Messiah garvey on his earth strong can we get a little hand clap for the honorable marcus Messiah garvey all right. Yes. The, the world ought to understand that the Negro has come to life, possessed with a new conscience and a new soul. The old Negro is buried. And it is well the world knew it. It is time that the world knows that the old Negro is buried. It is not my purpose to deceive the world. I believe in righteousness. I believe in truth. I believe in honesty. That is why I warn a selfish world of the outcome of their actions towards the oppressed. There will come a day, and Jehoseph Daniels wrote about it, a white statesman, and the world has talked about it, and I warn the world of it, that the day will come when the races of the world will marshal themselves in great conflict for the survival of the fittest. Men of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, I'm asking you to prepare yourselves and prepare your race the world over because the conflict is coming, not because you will it, not because you desire it, but because you will be forced into it. The conflict between the races is drawing nearer and nearer. You see it, I see it, I see it in the handwriting on the wall as expressed in the uprising in India. You see the handwriting on the wall in Africa. You see it, the handwriting on the wall of Europe. 
it is coming. It is drawing nearer and nearer. 400 million Negroes of the world. I am asking you to prepare yourselves so that you will not be found wanting when the day comes. What a sorry day it would be. I hope it will never come. But my hope, my wish will not prevent it coming. All that I can do is warn humanity everywhere so that humanity may change its tactics. It may change its tactics and warn them of the danger. I repeat, I warn the white world against the prejudice that they are practicing against the Negroes. I warn them against the segregation and the injustice that they make out for us. For the perpetuation of these things will mean the ultimate destruction of the present civilization and the building of a new civilization founded upon mercy, justice, and equality. Now, we are going to hear many more words from the Honorable Marcus of Sagarvi, um, but this is the prophet speaking, preparing us for times such as this. And we have now have the resources. We now have this amended consciousness, this temporary amended consciousness of the world's power who are forced to recognize the plight of our people around the world. The time is now for us to step forward with our demands, step forward with our faith in ourselves and our God, and to truly establish ourselves as the global leaders that we are destined to be. So I want to now um, acknowledge Minister of Information of the parent body of the UNIA ACL, the Pan-African Government of the World. My mentor, my brother, Minister Lion Blyden. Sir, are you there? Okay, shalom. He sends... Okay, I, I think I have some words I have to share from him. A lot of people's phones dying. <laughs> um, one second, I gotta find this. I gotta find the message from him. Um, he says here, um, phone died. No mic. Shalom, assalamu alaikum, hotep, afia, and always race first. There's no greater mission for the African than the unification of African people. One nation governed by the declarations and constitutions of the UNIA. ACL, and he ends with race first. Now, he mentioned, the Minister of Information mentioned the declarations, right? Now, for those who have heard about the UNIA ACL, but have not, have been, you know, subscribed to the, the teaching and the principles of it and the doctrine of it, I want to let you know that this declaration that was prepared um, in Madison Square Garden, right, voted upon and produced by men and women of one God, one aim, one destiny, they determined some things. And one of the things that they determined, not only the colors of our flag are the pledge that we say or the constitution that we, that we support, um, but they also, in this declaration, they listed things that they, that they demand the world respond to. And we need to we need to readjust, we need to reclaim that authority over who we are. In this declaration, it mentions that the word Negro cannot be spelled with the capital N, or the word black cannot be spelled with a, a lowercase b. That is that is controlling the narrative, and that is forcing the world to respect us as who we are. For years now, for three years during our emancipation proclamation, we have determined that and stated in the same spirit of, of 20,000, and the Minister of Information has just come on, over 20,000 African delegates from over 40 countries declared, we stand with the same authority. As we said, we are no longer responding to the term minority. We are not accepting you to call us a minority. We are a global dominant people. And we are controlling the narrative. So this declaration, not only in this declaration did it indicate that the word, the letter, the word black has to be spelled with the capital B when we refer to our people, but they also acknowledged August 31st. They acknowledged August 31st as being an Af a holiday for people of African descent all over the world. 
And last year, and this is this gives me so much joy to share. And this is a tribute to the vision of the Honorable Marcus Masai Garvey and the 20,000 plus African delegates who, who decided that this would be our, our Northern star. This is our Northern star. This is what we are to follow and for the world to, to refer to. In this declaration, it made it very clear that August 31st would be a, a day of a holiday for Africans all over the world. And last year, Costa Rica presented to the UN, all right, listen to me, presented to the UN that August 31st be recognized as the International Day of, of African people um, all over the world. And 52 countries, including Canada, voted yes. So this August 31st will be the very first year that August 31st will be recognized around the world as a holiday for us. Now, in 1920, our ancestors already put that for, forward. Our ancestors already declared it. And here we are 101 years later, and the world is responding. So what we do today, the world will respond to it. We, we have to trust who we are, that when God spoke, it happened. And when we spoke, it will happen. When we speak, it will happen. And just as they spoke in 1920 and put it on paper, today, it is official. And this year, August 31st, across um, Canada, and we are working across the world that the UNIA ACL red, black, and green flag will fly all over the world to celebrate the very first anniversary. So the dates that we have in Canada, we have August 31st secured at Queen's Park. Adam Solomon, minister, we're going back to Queen's Park to take over. All right? Yes. Yes, uh, <laughs> August thirty first. We're going back. I say, um, two p.m. <laughs> yeah, we are working on flag raisings in Whitby. We have flag raisings in Chapman, Kent. We have flag raisings all over the world right now um, to, to 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 celebrate August thirty first. So I just want to share that breaking news to you all. Well, um, also, I would like to take a moment to just get the just get some feedback. Yes, the Minister of Information has also shared that in Buffalo, New York, um, we also have a celebration all over the world, August 31st, which has always been a holiday for us. But now the world is finally recognizing. And the most important part of what I have to say about that is that when the Costa Rica, when the delegates of the Costa Rica asked for this resolution to pass, they cited our declaration. They cited the declaration of the UNIA ACL as the reason why August 31st should be recognized. So we are getting the we are getting respect around the world and the UNIA divisions all over the world are going to be called to, to give our people this new programming so that they can they can rid themselves of mental slavery. Nations recognizing our nations. Listen, we are a global people. We have been scattered around the globe and we have one flag we have one God, one destiny, and one aim. And it's going to be the Garveyites who are going to move forward and, uh, and give the people of Africa descent around the world what they need to know, what they need to follow, and the discipline and the order so that we may resurrect our communities, and we may resurrect this mighty race of ours and accomplish what we will. And yes, it is blessed news, brother. I cannot wait. August 31st. It's, it's massive. It's massive. Emancipation Month. So I want to welcome everyone for just tuning in um, to the Emancipation Month Marcus Garvey Day celebration 2021. Um, you know, for years past on this day, the last time we were able to gather as a community was at Toronto City Hall. And we had the Minister of Information present with us. Um, we had the Honorable Dr. Julius Garvey present with us. We revealed a plaque, a plaque from Heritage Ontario that celebrated and acknowledged the, the, the ownership and the possession of a building on College Street, the, the Liberty Hall on College Street, which was purchased by Garveyites, which was inhabited by Garveyites and became an epicenter of Black pride, Black love and development in the city of Toronto, right? 
a very special place. Um, and now, as as we move forward to create the narrative, um, I'm, I'm going to ask everyone to support our campaign. Um, one of our campaign uh, items this Emancipation Month is, the, is to rename a street in Toronto, Marcus Garvey Way. Um, the Garveyites in Buffalo, we have already voted on it, and we have a Marcus Garvey Way in Buffalo, okay? But now we are working towards getting the Marcus Garvey Way in Toronto. Um, this is one of this is part of our Emancipation Proclamation as we list the things that we want to get done. That is the difference between Emancipation Month and any other time of the year. During this time of the year, we list the demands. We make it clear what we want, and we do everything we can in our power to get it done. Okay, and most importantly, we pray. We pray on this thing. Right. We have been emancipated. We are we are going to introduce a pan-African spirituality to, the, to our people so that they can reclaim their rightful place in a space of righteousness, in a space of love, in a space of mercy and grace, and, and, and truthfully, and truthfully, in a space of dominance, in a space of dominance. So um, we are excited about re revealing that information on Marcus Garvey Way in Toronto. Um, we have big plans, and I will tell you all that we are targeting Eglinton West. So I know I have some Canadians, some Afro-Canadians who are on the call right now, and you know we need your support. Um, so what I like to do at this at this juncture is I'm going to read a couple quotes from the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, and then I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm going to open the floor. I'm going to open the floor um, to anyone who would like to share um, and, and just give us their impression of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey as we celebrate his Earth Strong. And we're gonna be wrapping up in just a few minutes, um, but as we celebrate his Earth Strong, I, would, I will open the floor. The Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey says, we are going to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery, for though others may free the, the body, none but ourselves can free the mind. Mind is our only ruler, sovereign. The man who is not able to develop and use his mind is bound to be a slave by the other man who uses his mind. Because man is related to man under all circumstances for good or ill. The Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey also says, a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. And as we move forward, and reestablishing the Toronto UNIA. There are people that we pay tribute to. On this Marcus Garvey Day, we celebrate the spirit and we welcome the presence of Brother Terry Brown. Brother Terry Brown in Toronto is the one who brought Marcus Garvey Day to, the, to, to Torontonians. And as we continue in that legacy, we will ensure that his memory lasts forever. Um, <laughs> You know, and, and we also acknowledge the passing of a brother um, who just passed away, a, a, a global teacher, a master teacher. We've actually, we actually placed the title master teacher on him um, who, who just recently passed away, um, Brother Rashidi. Um, brother Rashidi who traveled the world um, and who, who informed us and taught us so much a master teacher who has left his legacy upon us. We will ensure that we constantly celebrate his findings and celebrate his wisdom. So at this point, at this point, I'd like to just turn this event over to those who are on the call um, to share with us, uh, you know, who the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey is to them. I can call on people. I mean, I see, I see we still have um, Brother Robert White the third um, from the Atlanta division um, of the UNIACL. Um, I would be honored to hear from you, sir. Um, we also have um, Elder Norman Otis Richmond on the call who has seen so much in the city of Toronto. Um, we will be honored to hear from you. Um, you know, of course, we have our sisters on the call, 
and we are very adamant making sure that everything we do is balanced and we always want to make sure that the women among us um, are honored are recognized and are extended an opportunity to speak so it would be a true pleasure and honor to hear from the women who are on this call right now please all right so we are going to move forward um at any point if you want to raise your hand um and just if you have something to share um i will i will let you know that um as garveyites okay i have a hand coming up yeah. there's a hand there can i say something briefly yes please yeah I just yours. um the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey is a national hero um, for the black people worldwide. All of the diasporas, he's an inspiration. He's been an inspiration for the verse for um for for Kwame. I can't spell, pronounce his last name, the um one of the presidents of of of, of Ghana. Kwame Nkrumah. Pronounce it say for me. Kwame Nkrumah. Kwame Nkrumah. Yeah, Kwame Nkrumah went to Harlem. He studied what you know to speak the, the teachings of Marcus Garvey. You know he's just been an inspiration, and, and I, I'm blessed, you know, to to carry on his legacy. You know, um, united we stand, divided we fall. Africa, oh. Africans for Africa, Africa for Africans. One love, one respect. Let me just close out with this brief snippet of a song. I'm not going to take up your time. I know time is precious, but I just want to sing this. I know my days will be long and my nights will be few. To the visions that I could see clearly that there's going to be peace, love and harmony, black understanding among my people, among my people. And then we're going to jump and shout black liberation day. Oh, yes, we're going to sing and shout the right understanding day. Oh yes. Blessings, everyone. Peace. Oh, okay. So that is that that's the dying thief, right? Yes, yes. Yes, King. Respect, King. I, I you know, I saw Eddie. I Man, I don't know Eddie. I don't know Eddie. Eddie, are you ready? I don't know no Eddie. That's the only Eddie I know. Eddie is you ready. Much respect, King. Um, you know, we have still. I'm tr truly honored to have you on this call. Um, I want to, I want to, I want to invite you to um, further UNIA diversity meetings um, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, this, what we do is we break open the word, we share yeah. it among each other, uh -huh. and we build. You know, and the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, um, it's not, it's not something just to talk about. It's, you know, he has left us um, a legacy. Um, that we need to embrace and make our own. And, you know, and it's something to, that we need to activate into our own lives, into our own worlds, into our own lanes. Um, it, is, it is the programming that we needed. You know, after emancipation, right, we weren't given any new way of thinking, right? Um, we weren't given any new way to see ourselves. And what God has given the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey was a vision of who we are. He, he was able to connect us to the Bible. He was able to connect us to the ancient kings and queens of the world and to be able to see us um, for who we are. And he spoke that into the, and he spoke that into the public. He spoke that to the people of Harlem. And he said, black people, you have a greater purpose in this world. You have to see yourselves as kings and queens. And so it's, it's vital that we use his teaching his philosophies, his opinions, and that we use it to navigate through this world that we live in today. So that song that you sang, bro, bless. And I'm gonna need you to, I'm gonna need you to share that one more time because we all want to sing that song. We want to leave here with that song. So, brother, hopefully you can share that with us because I see a duet with you and the minister, um, Adam Solomon. You know, um, I see a duet. I see, I see it happening. You and a Adam Solomon, Juno Award winning Minister of Music for Emancipation Month with the Dying Thief singing that song August 31st as we raise the flag 
um, across Canada and across the world in celebration of the very first International Day of People of African Descent, okay? So brother, I, I want you to be part of that special moment. Um, what I would like to do is I'd like to let, uh, we have members of the Toronto UNIA that are on the call and I wanna acknowledge them. I also see a hand up. So if there's a hand up, I think brother Paul was your hand up. I wanna extend the opportunity to everyone who would like to share something. So brother Paul, did you put a hand up, sir? Yes, I did. I did, yes. All right. Well, if, if that was if that was a hand up to speak, the floor is yours. Um, I want to give thanks to everybody, um, definitely to the committee for resurrecting the UNIA, um, resurrecting Marcus Garvey Day. Um, and for myself, you know, Marcus Garvey, uh, greatest inspiration, I always say is he gave us the cause to raise the flag, you know, and to raise our flag and simply meaning to bring attention to what is important to us as African people. Um, he inspired uh, an ancestor of mine, Terry Brown, who actually held the first Marcus Garvey Day ever in Toronto um, in 1993, which I was a young teenager back then. And, you know, uh, myself and my friend played and he just gave us the platform to say, you know, you're young people, you need to be involved. Um, this is what the spirit is, of Marcus Garvey is about. And, you know, we continued that event for over 10 years in Toronto. So I'm glad to, to know that the spirit of Marcus Garvey, uh, the spirit of organizing. And I think, you know, we take up the mantle to make sure that um, our young people, right? Our young people have to know the philosophy uh, of Marcus Garvey, but more importantly, they have to be the ones who, um, you know, take the baton and make it make sense in their world. So definitely, I, I definitely, you know, uh, inspired by Marcus as a visionary and who would ever think, you know, a hundred years later that uh, we would still be here talking about the movement and still the work we need to do. So giving thanks for that. Ashe. Ashe. Brother Paul, if I could take this moment, to, um, thank you for that. I, I had no idea of your connection to um, our ancestor, Terry Brown, um, but I know, you know, during, you know, after his transition, um, I know I had an opportunity and the honor to be present. Um, I believe it was that Timeless, um, where they had a, um, you know, they had a celebration of his life. And, you know, at this time, this was early during the time of Emancipation Month, and um, I was carrying this flag to every significant black moment in, in history. And I was connecting this flag to every significant moment. Um, the same flag that I have right now is the very first flag that was ever flown in Canadian history. Um, and it, I was taking this flag all over, wherever I thought the spirit, wherever the spirit led me to, to go. And I went um, to that event and I brought the flag um, and I remember going to an event in Scarborough um, and I presented the flag to the family and I said, this flag is to you, is, is for you for loan, you know, because Marcus Garvey says, when I die, wrap me up in the red, black and green. And every Garvey, I should have that distinct honor, you know, today, you know, during August 13th, on August 13th, in the week of August 13th, um, which is the anniversary of the flag, it is now a tradition for Garveyites to visit other Garveyites grave sites um, and to plant a flag um, by, their, by their site um, and acknowledge that a Garveyite is here. And, um, and today I had the honor of going to the grave site of Queen Mother Rosa Montgomery, who is celebrating her earth strong today, as same as the Honorable Margaret of Messiah Garvey. And I, I, we went and we honored her um, and we honored the Honorable One and, um, and so that is now our duty and responsibility to make sure that these, the Garveyites of the past um, are always celebrated, are always recognized. And so um, Brother Paul Osborne, 
um, for the work that you and your wife, and I can't acknowledge you without acknowledging your wife, because I know you're a team. Um, and I want to just celebrate the Osbournes, man. You have raised up incredible children who are, you know, filled with pride of who they are. Um, they have been, they have been prepared, you know, to be leaders in our world. Um, and, you know, I'm so excited about seeing what, the, what they are able, how they are able to impact the world. So as a father, as a true Pan-Africanist, and, you know, and for your work to celebrate the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey on his earth strong with your run that you put together, I want to also give you, Mr. Paul Osborne, <laughs> with an Emancipation Mar Marcus Garvey Award to Brother Paul Osborne. So you, sir, will not only get this, oh, a certificate, but you will also get delivered to you a three by five um, foot flag so that you may be able to um, sh share with share your pride with the world. Um, and as an ancestor and as a descendant of Terry Brown, who we will forever honor on this day, um, along with the Honorable Marcus Mustai Garvey and our Queen Mother Rosa Montgomery. Um, it's an honor to have you on this call, sir. Thank you so much. All right. Give it thanks, my brother. Give it thanks. So hopefully we can hopefully we can get you to put together a run for us um, in Emancipation Park in Brampton. Okay. Um, August 31st. We got to take over the park, all right? There's a whole lot of seats in the park. There's a whole lot of other people in Emancipation Park, and we got to reclaim it. And that's and that's the thing with our people. We have to, listen, when we have spaces, we have to occupy them, okay? It's important that we occupy them, because if we do not, they will be occupied by others. So now that we have a park in Brampton, and listen, Toronto, Emancipation Park is coming. Like, we... Our plan in Emancipation Month, and I'm going to share with you, Emancipation Month's plan is to ensure that we have 24 parks across the globe until the end, uh, up, up until, and, and our timeline is 2024, all right? So 2024, um, it is imperative that we, that we expand the Emancipation Parks around the globe. Um, and so Brampton is one down, but we have many, many more to go. Uh, so, President, President, excuse me. Yes, sir. Is it, is it possible for us to get Down's view for to be in, in, if you talk to the mayor and, and that be looked at? at well, you know, I, I tell you what, we have a lot of history there. I mean, yes. I think I, I think we start looking at the places where we have history, especially like an Afrofest, you know, yeah. places where, where we've occupied. Um, we also want to be strategic about it. You know, we and and the thing is. Um, and, and brother, um, brother Peter Lopez is not on the call right now, but he is instrumental in the reason why we have an emancipation park. He and I put together the, the 2020 plan of inclusion and equity for African Canadians. And this was a document that was signed by the candidate for mayor at the time, Patrick Brown. He got elected because, you know, of everything worked in his favor, including our support. Um, and, and that was something that we held him to task. And never before have Black people been able to put together a document, hold a binding agreement with a government official to get something done. And as in Canada, I'm speaking to my Canadians, I'm speaking to my Africans in Canada right now. Yes, sir. You know, there's an election coming up in September. If yes, we don't have a list of demands... If we don't have a list of demands, we are going to miss out on a very special opportunity. This is the last election during the in international decade of people of African descent. This is the last election that we get to federally put the pressure on who wants our vote. And you know what? If you want our vote, this is what we want. One. We don't want to hear what you're going to give us. We're going to tell you what we want. One. Okay? And listen, we made it very easy. We just said we want 20% of everything for 2020. We want 20% of your staff to be black. We want 20% of jobs to go to black people. We want 20% of your business dealings to go to black owned businesses. Okay, we made it very simple. And so we got to make sure that we have a plan. So this Emancipation Month, we are putting our minds together. And this is a catalytic moment that's going to launch us into the future. So um, I want to just take a look at who's on the call because there are some very important points that we have to make. And I have more awards to give away. 
Thank you again, um, Brother Paul. Let me just check to see. Did you have a, did you have something else? To say? Let me just check. I'm checking the, the, the messages here. Um, just give me one second. All right. So um, I would like to now um, invite the wisdom of Norman Otis Richmond, if I may. Brother Norman Otis Richmond, may I invite you to this Marcus Garvey Day celebration, please? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that he can he can join in on us. Um, I will I would like to now, if I may, um, go to a Toronto Garvey, a member of the Toronto UNIA ACL, um, Brother Nasakare, the owner of Nile Valley Bookstore on Gerard Street, um, which has been operating 20 plus years. Brother Nasakare, are you there? Peace, bro, I'm here. Race first, brother, race, race first. first. Race first. All right, my um, um, elder, if, you know, when you talk about Marcus Garvey, if you don't any, own any, any of his books, if you haven't read any of his books, okay, um, you're missing out, all right? It's, it's our job as Garveyites to ensure that the wisdom, the opinions and philosophies of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey is in fact shared, studied, reasoned upon and implemented in, in our world today. And so, I wanted to just, first of all, congratulate you on a very successful Black Book Fair. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Uh, well, that, that was an amazing experience. Um, during Emancipation Month, we had a Black Book Fair. And if you wanna know what else is going on for Emancipation Month, please go to emancipationmonth.com, all right? Now, six years ago, we didn't have an Emancipation Month. Six years ago, we did not have a red, black, and green flag being flown anywhere, okay? Um, and, and, and I'm going to be honest, it was nothing but the Spirit of God that, that spoke to me. And it was the same voice that told me to run for mayor, okay, in 2010 and 2014, right? I know that voice. The same voice that told me to speak to that Trinidadian and Tobago girl on the streetcar, the one that I was running from. And thank God that I listened to that voice because she's now my wife, my the love of my life, and the mother of, of two of my um, beautiful babies, Miss Queen Suzette. So I know that voice, and that voice has never led me wrong. And that voice told me to raise this flag in Toronto. And after lots of opposition and lots of discouragement, um, it we, ha we had a breakthrough because we must break through, because we must we must accomplish what we will as we when we rise up we will because the favor of god is on our lives do you understand what we have done for 400 years do you understand what kind of preserved blessings are waiting for us to activate you don't understand because you would be bold you would step forth and you would bring god along with you every step of the way like our ancestors did like the honorable martin messiah garvey did he put pressure on God. He told the Lord Jesus Christ that it was us. It was a black man that helped carry your cross. Now help us carry ours. So we have raised this flag. Emancipation Month is now celebrated across Canada and we control the narrative. And that is the most important part. We control the channels of communication. For those who have been on Marcus Garvey Day on Instagram, we control the communication for those who have found out about this on emancipation day on instagram we control the narrative we control the channels of communication so we have a black book fair because we have powerful resources in our community to help us create books i heard a poem at the black book fair that i hope to get that i hope that it's published one day so the world can share it brother Dwayne. Dwayne Genius, who is a member of the Toronto UNIA ACL here in Toronto. Um, I want to tell you that that poem touched me, bro. I don't know. If, I'm just checking to see if you're still here with us. Um, a lot of people going in and out. Um, but, you know, we have so much that God has given us that we have to find a way to publish it. 
because if the Honorable Mark Messiah Garvey did not publish his books, we would not have this as a, as a guiding light for us today. So if there's something in your spirit, please help publish it. And we have the resources in our community to do it. So Brother Nisakare, um, mm. could you please share with us some of the books of the Honorable Mark Messiah Garvey so that people can make notes and ensure that they add them to their library. Yes. Uh, the Honorable Marcus Garvey was an advocate of learning, of reading especially, and his advice to us was to read four hours a day. Read, study, question, debate, share. This is how we grow. The man and woman of ideas are the leaders of the world. Ideas run the world. And when you stimulate your mind through reading, through introspection, this is how we develop ourselves individually, as a community and as a nation. One of the most important books that Marcus Garvey put together was actually done in Toronto. Uh, it's the title of it now is called um, Message to the People. And what it was, was a a course to teach the young leaders coming up. And what it is, is really um, 22 lessons in the book. And really what it is, is a guideline, a guidebook for us in order for us to develop every aspect of our human beings, every aspect of our potential, to put us in an African frame of mind with an African family, with African principles in order to guide us forward. So as part of the Toronto UNIA, we have been reading and studying message to the people. And also we had a book club on Saturdays led by the by brother Dwayne, when we were, we were reading chapter by chapter, Garvey and Garveyism. Garvey and Garveyism was compiled by uh, his wife, Amy Jacques Garvey. And it's a book that is very informative and it's necessary. It's actually vital. If you want to know anything about Garvey and the work that we have to do, our life mission has to be read that book and understand it well. It gives you a history of Marcus Garvey, how the UNIA was founded, how we made the flag, the reason for that, the songs, the pledges. So you get an in-depth understanding of the man and his ideas and where his greatness came from. And what he said is, he read on almost every subject imaginable because in order to be a well-rounded person, you must have knowledge on, on a variety of topics. And so Garvey and Garveyism gave you a history of the foundation of the UNIA when he established it in Jamaica, um, in England, in London, England, and also in Harlem. And he spoke about all the different chapters that are all over the world. And I wanted to give a shout out to uh, our noble elder, Brother Normanus, Norman Otis Richmond. Uh, he taught me a lot about Marcus Garvey as well on his show uh, on, on 88 One. And um, I realized you must always keep spreading the word because you never know who's, who, who the message will reach. And uh, Norman Otis was the first one to tell me about uh, UNIA chapters in Louisiana, in Cuba, in Costa Rica, in Panama. So this showed the, 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 universal, the universal reach of the Garvey message, self-empowerment. And self-empowerment is not coming from just talking, it's about through learning. Who we are as African people, our accomplishments, and what we have to do to maintain our ascendancy, and we learn also from our mistakes, what mistakes were made. And so we, um, we will rise again, we must rise again. And let me give you a couple of, of uh, uh, titles by the Honorable Marcus Garvey, written mainly by um, Tony Martin and also Rupert Lewis out of Jamaica. Um, Nile Valley Books is, I want it to be a resource for African people. If you want to learn about your African culture, whether you're a man, a woman, or a teenager, or a child, 
we have the resources that are going to assist you in your in your goal to resurrect the African mentality, the African spirit inside of you. And we want you to be informed, be educated, be inspired, be motivated to be the best person you can be. So books about Marcus Garvey and the UNIA, the Pan-African Connection, Literary Garveyism, Marcus Garvey Hero. Then there's also a book uh, about his first wife, Amy Ashwood Garvey. The importance of Amy Ashwood Garvey is that um, he formed the UNIA with Amy Ashwood Garvey. Uh, African fundamentalism, race first. Um, there's a book, there's also a book written about his second wife, Amy Jacques Garvey. It's called The Veiled Garvey, The Life and Times of Amy Jacques Garvey. Then we have the poetical works of Marcus Garvey. He wrote poetry that was inspiring and motivating and uplifting. Garvey and Garveyism, as I mentioned before, and a book compiled also by Amy Jacques Garvey, Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Garvey, one and two. He also wrote a pamphlet called The Tragedy of White Injustice that he said is essential for you to read in order to understand the circumstances you're living with and the people that you're interacting with. Also, Marcus Garvey and the Vision of Africa. That, book's come, that book comes with a foreword by the great uh, African-centered scholar, John Henry Clark, one of the noble ancestors. Also, The Age of Garvey. And then there's a book for teenagers called A Man Called Garvey. So for our young people who are coming up and we want to inspire them and give them an understanding of who we are and what is necessary for them as human beings, this is their, their rites of passage as it's called, uh, A Man Called Garvey, Four Teenagers. Yes. So that's it, Brother Man. Ashe, Ashe. So you mentioned he's a poet. You, yes. you, you know, and, and you mentioned that, you know, the, the work that he's produced um, and also, you know, the, uh, the books that we have gone through at, in the book club. So yes. I want to let everyone know that emancipationmonth.com is the place where you're able to find information about the, this 2021 emancipation book list. So we just had a book fair um, last week and that book fair consisted of many black, all black authors and black publishers. We have the resources in our community to help you um, put, bring your story to life and leave a legacy for your, for your children, for children around you. Um, so it's very important um, that we support black bookstores of course, I'll be remiss if I don't acknowledge a different book list, um, you know, who has obviously, you know, been a mainstay in Black Hearse for a very long time. And they have great plans to continue uh, co continuing being dominant and very ever present in that community, um, in, in the Black Hearse community and preserving what we have gone through and what we've done um, and setting a new narrative um, for what, who we are in this society. So, um, but could you just tell everyone, uh, Brother Nisakare, where to come to Nile Valley Books to get your get these books that you talked about, please? Yes, so Nile Valley Books is located at 1921 Gerard Street, East at Woodbine. And my hours of operation are 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. I also have a website, nilevalleybooks.ca, and you can just, you can check on it every two weeks to see what new titles are uh, are included. Uh, we always have new titles that we're adding because uh, our people are writing every day and um, we learn about uh, new topics every day. So we want to just keep informing our community. Our main, um, our main aim, like the, like the preamble says, is uh, charitable, knowledgeable association. So in keeping with that, we're always trying to upgrade and keep uh, our people informed of their noble ancestry and their accomplishments. 
That's right. And speaking of our elders and our, their accomplishments, um, I'd like to take this moment to acknowledge, as you mentioned earlier, um, the work of, uh, of Elder um, Norman Otis Richmond, um, who is an incredible keepsake in our community. He's a, he's a treasure in our community. And, um, you know, I am so grateful for the work that he and many others along with him have done um, to establish our presence and to demand the respect um, that we deserve. And so we want to extend the same amount of respect that he fought for for so many years to him for all of his work. And he is also a recipient of the Emancipation Month Marcus Garvey Award. Um, and so this will be sent to you, sir, along with your very own three by five flag um, that it will be sent off to you. And, you're, and most importantly, this is history. We are, we, are, we are putting together a list of our who's who. We are putting together a list of our people who have broken down barriers and have, have helped this generation um, be bold and vibrant and visible and vocal. So we want to thank you. And I hope you can um, unmute your mic, unmute your microphone um, and speak to the people if you can, sir. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we can see you, brother. And we can see you. Praise God. Yes, sir. Uh, you had you had a question. What you wanted me to, me to address? How how is everyone doing? First of all, bless, brother. Bless. It's an honor to be in your presence. Blessing, blessing. We give thanks. Oh, it's an it, it it's an honor to be in everyone's presence. Uh, yeah, Marcus Garvey was, uh, um, I guess he was a big influence on, uh, well, I don't, I don't guess, he was a big influence on me. I came out of, uh, well, I was born in, in, in Louisiana and I uh, came to California, Los Angeles, California, when I was uh, six months old. And I went to the Nation of Islam. I went to Temple 27, the first time when I was uh, 14 years old, when they killed Patrice Lamumba, uh, Joseph Okito, and Maurice Impolo on January the 17th, 1961, I was 14. And I was going to John C. Fremont High, John C. Fremont High School, and there was a brother from the Nation of Islam that told me. Uh, well, there was a guy was making fun of the names. I say boo boo and you know, he was really making fun of the whole African situation and that didn't make any sense to me. So as, as a result of that, it was a brother from the Nation of Islam. He asked me, did, did I want to hear the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? And I didn't know, at 14, I didn't know who the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was. So I went to the mosque at 14 and I heard the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And then I found out that many of my cousins were members of, 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 of temple, they call them temples at that time, Temple 27. And then I became, uh, uh, you know, I became a uh, student activist. You know, I ran track and did a little singing before a while. And I jumped on the, the, the political uh, bandwagon and, and uh, I uh, always uh, embraced Marcus uh, Mosiah Garvey. And it's my understanding that Garvey's biggest following was in Louisiana. That's according to uh, Tony Martin, the great Trinidadian, uh, Trinidad and, to, the Trinidadian and Tob Tobagonian uh, Tony Martin. Uh, he used to come to Toronto many times. I had the pleasure of spending quite a bit of time with him. And his book, Race First, is a is a must read. Well, in, uh, any book by Tony Martin is 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 a, is a must. And I don't know if 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 Nasa Carey, if if Tony Martin has passed, he joined the ancestors. And I don't know who's carrying his books at the at the present time. But hopefully, 
uh, you can still receive his books. Yeah, but Marcus Garvey was, was had an impact on on uh, on, on me. August the seventeenth, I think we put something together on Marcus Garvey's centenary in 1987, we put together a, Terry Brown was part of that, Terry Brown was there and Milton Blake, Salome Bay, uh, uh, Diane Liverpool was part of the organization. And we had a, uh, a, a, a booklet that we put out. I was looking at it a few, I put it on Facebook, but that booklet was act actually put together by Cameron Bailey a uh, very beautiful booklet and Cameron uh, Cameron did the book the cover and I did the I, did, I wrote a little essay on, on Garvey where, where I talked about Garvey having uh, the Negro world and the Negro world was published in English, French, Spanish and it was a daily. I don't know if we as African people have a, a daily news. This is 2021. I don't know if there's a black daily newspaper anywhere in North America, I hope we have daily paper. Well, I guess we have daily newspapers in the Caribbean and in Africa, but, in, but black people in America and in Canada, we we don't have we don't have a daily. And Garvey had a daily, and not only was it a daily, but it was printed in English, French, and Spanish, and that had a real Im impact on me because you know a lot of our people speak. Speak French, uh, you know. We have Guadeloupe, Martinique, and uh, Spanish, of course. We have the Cubans, the Puerto Ricans, and uh, you know. I guess we speak uh, what is we, in, French, English, Spanish, and uh, what's the, the language they, that they speak in the, in the Dutch Caribbean, Papiamento. And I was blessed to have met a young man by the name of Jose Garcia, who was from uh, Curacao, Aruba. And we put together an organization called the Afro-American Progressive Association in the 60s. And we had a newsletter called Harambe. And Jose Garcia was a big influence on, 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 on all of us because he was basically able to communicate with, with all of us because of his knowledge of, of the languages and the fact that he had traveled uh, uh, so many places. Lenny Johnson, the third world bookstore, Gwen Johnston, his wife, and they, this, I'm gonna say this, then I'm gonna close. Lenny told me when Marcus Garvey came to Toronto, I guess it was in 19, he came in in 1937 and he spoke at the UNIA and he fired at that time, the Canadian Negroes up so much that everybody went back to work, talked back to their boss and got fired. <laughs> and uh, yeah, everybody got fired and, uh, and I guess when they had to come back to their senses and you know, go back go back to work. But uh, uh, Lenny was influenced by by Marcus Garvey, and uh, that is uh, my uh, those are my thoughts on Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Well, well Elder, we know you have uh, much more to share. Um, Thank you. I, I, I want. I, I want to thank you for um, being a constant um, voice for the voiceless and ensuring that our, our people are inspired and motivated to be their best selves. Um, I know um, Black Power 96 point, what is it? What? Black Power 96.3, the Uhuru Radio, of, yeah, Black Power 96. Yeah, Black Power 96.3 right. out of uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Right, so we know you're still broadcasting um, I had the honor to, to present you with a Jackie Robinson Fortitude Award at First Fridays a few years back for your work in, 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 in uh, journalism. Um, you, um, you, have, you, you, know, you reminded us of um, Elder Hamilton um, and his work. And you know, it is time that we make sure that we control the media, that we control the narrative, and that we use these tools that God has given us um, in this present day. Um, to make sure that positive messages are going forward, um, you know, messages of power, messages of truth, and messages that will emancipate our people. And you have continued to use every outlet that you can find to ensure that our people are liberated and emancipated. So that is why, sir, um, you are the recipient of the Emancipation Month 
uh, Mark just got the award here. And I'm, I'm just very honored to have you in our midst. Um, you know, the last time just I got let, a chance- just, just let me say a Santa Sana for that. Ah, uh, Karibu. <laughs> when you say a Santa Sana, you say Karibu. That means Karibu means welcome. You know, well <laughs> Thank you. Right. <laughs> That's you I said. Great. You know, we learned Swahili from a Kenyan brother in Detroit, Mina wow. Kenya, Kenyati. Yeah, Kenyati. Oh. Ma, Mari Kenyati, he, was, he wrote a lot of books on uh, Didan Kimathi and Mau Mau. Yes, wonderful. He's, uh, he's still in the land of the living. Oh, wonderful. Uh, David, uh, please get uh, his uh, um, contact. I would like to keep in touch with that. Uh, yes, I, I will make the connection. I will make the yes. connection. And, and I just have a quote here from the Honorable Marcus Masai Garvey. It says, go to work. Go to work in the morn of a new creation until you have reached the height of self-progress and from that pinnacle bestow upon the world a civilization of your own. It is time for us to break from this consumer, all right, this complacent consumer mentality and that we, we start thinking as a producer and think of a manufacturer um, for our own communities. Um, that, is, that is where... Where that is the, the final frontier of freedom um, is when we are the manufacturers of our own freedom. And this is the time to act. And it, it can only be done when we have the wisdom and the guidance of our elders and we have the vigor and the enthusiasm of today's generation. And when we can find a way to come together and pool our resources, we will achieve greatness. So um, Elder Norman Otis Richmond, um, I know your, your story, you deserve a Zoom all by yourself, um, just so we can hear about your travels, hear about your experiences, and hear about your vision for the future, because we need to make sure that it is recorded so that we can always reflect on it, um, and we can always pay tribute to your wisdom, sir. So thank you for leaving a trail for us to follow into the new frontier of freedom. You are a, liber you are a revolutionary you are one of our beloved um, elders, and we we are so grateful for you. Um, and thank you for being part of this, Marcus um, Garvey. Day. And I just want to let you know that your, your check is in the mail. <laughs> All right, I'll be looking forward to it now. You can just e-transfer now. You ain't got to check no more. You're so old school. <laughs> you can just e-transfer me, man. You can e-transfer me. TorontoUNIA at gmail.com. All right, so we are... Listen, so we covered a few things, and I want to make sure um, that, you know, everyone knows that this is an open forum. Everyone can express if there's anything on their hearts. Um, I, I'm, what I want to do is I want to get through the list of all the recipients um, this year. We are streaming live on my Facebook page, by the way, um, and I would like to just run down the list of the 2021 Emancipation Month Marcus Garvey Awards. Um, we are going to hear again from... Um, Adam Solomon. Um, I understand Charlie Bubos is on the call from Jamaica. He keeps coming in and out. Um, so hopefully he can make it back because he's going to share something. And we are going to, we are going to conclude um, with a very special meditation presentation from none other than the guru of peace, Brother Kofi. All right. So, you know, Emancipation Month um, is about healing. It's about empowerment. It's about development, it's about advocacy, um, but it's about healing and it's about being centered and being able to find peace in our crazy world. And you know what? Being blessed with this melanin um, gives us an incredible amount of responsibility and pressure in this world. And we have to find ways to self-medicate and self-heal. Um, and, you know, we have we, we you know, we are obviously very familiar with the power of prayer. The Honorable Marcus Messiah Gari himself. Um, is a devout Christian and, you know, has, has spoken to our role and he's put in our model for one God. Um, and he says, you know, God in nature first made us what we are. And then out of our own created genius, we make ourselves what we want to be. Follow always that great law. Let the sky and God be our limit and eternity our measurement. Um, so I want to just once again recap who we presented the award to this year. Um, Elder Norman Otis Richmond is a recipient. We acknowledge 
um, our, our very good, um, our, our first speaker, um, who was Roy Anderson. Roy, excuse me, Roy Anderson, um, Brother Adam Solomon, Brother Paul Osborne, Brother OG from Mac Pre, Sister Lori, Sister Lori from the Afro Caribbean Farmers Market, and so much more on Eglinton West. We thank her for all her vision, vision, visionary work. Um, Elder Lewis March, who was on the call earlier, um, I was begging for him to come back. I was hoping for him to come back. Um, I hope that we get to hear from him. But he is also a recipient. Um, he has so much to share on the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey and the UNIA ACL in the city of Toronto. Um, Elder Peter Lopez, Elder Peter Lopez of the Black Voter Base. Toronto Garvey, a member of the Toronto UNIA, the resurrected Toronto UNIA, Brother Dwayne Genius. Brother Dwayne Genius, you are also a recipient of the Emancipation Month Marcus Garvey Award. And who was on the call earlier, um, the Minister of Information of the parent body of the UNIA ACL, Minister Lion Blyden, um, is, is a recipient of that award as well. Um, so what I'd like to do is I have... A big announcement, and this is the big announcement. Emancipation Month Canada, in conjunction with OCAD, um, is proud to present Emancipate Your Gift contest. There are three contests, three contests, um, and that we are so grateful and, and humbled to be able to offer to the community this year. So right now, so for all those who know, um, we are launching three annual challenges during Emancipation Month. Um, and the first challenge is the Marcus Garvey or or Oratorial Open. The Marcus Garvey Oratorial Open. This is open to participants 16 years old and older. They must recite a speech from the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. The video must be between three to four minutes long. First place is going to receive $200. Second place, $150. And third place, $100. This is open to participants 16 years and older. The second challenge for the Emancipate Your Gifts and Free Them is the Mary Ann Shad Writing Competition, open to girls who are 16 years and under Pieces must be 750 words long. They will be graded on proper punctuation. And the theme is, what does emancipation mean to you? And the third challenge is the Kumba, Kumba music compilation. Eddie, I hope, um, Eddie, Eddie, I'm reading the thing. Dying Thief, um, I hope this is something that you consider. Um, okay, so this music, the Kumba music compilation is your music must be about black empowerment, black struggle and black history. The artist chosen will be compensated in $100 and a music video will be produced for your song. We are gonna put it together for a compilation and it's gonna be available streaming on all platforms because we have to control the narrative. We have to make sure that the next generation hears music that empowers, that lifts, that inspires and motivates. And that is our goal. And if we end up getting a Juno Award because of it, so be it. But at the end of the day, we want to produce content that the, wor that the world can be inspired of. And so these are the three contests that we are able to offer to the community, three challenges. We can offer the community at this point um, through the generosity of OCAD. Um, and OCAD has a liberal arts writing program um, that, they are looking for writers. They are looking for people who want to be, you know, narrators of a new generation. And so because of that um, and because of their interest in being able to obviously find the new artists and the new writers, um, this is a very special opportunity that we are grateful to be able to present to the world. So that is my big acknowledgement on behalf of Emancipation Month. Um, we are now going to just transition to the wrapping up of this event. Um, we are going to hear from Minister of Music of Emancipation Month, uh, Minister Adam Solomon. And Brother Kofi, could you just let us know that you're still with us? 
I just want to get an idea who's with us still. Brother Kofi, are you able to share? Absolutely, brother. Okay. okay. Um, All right. Well, so brother Kofi is prepared to share. Brother Charlie Bobas, are you available to share? Greetings. <laughs> From the island of Jamaica. Uh -huh. Bobas. Bobas. Yo, dumb poet extraordinaire. Look at Marcus Garvey in the background. Let me get a screenshot of that, brother. Hold on, hold on. Let me get a screenshot of that. Let me see Marcus Garvey now. Hold on. Yeah, no, you keep, you stay there with you. Hold on, hold on one second, brother. You stay, you and Marcus Garvey in the shot together. Three, two, one, hold on. All right, I got the screenshot. All right, so we got Charlie Bubba's, we got Adam Solomon, and we're going out with brother Kofi, who's gonna help us meditate and heal. So. I am, I am regressing and I'm turning over to the Minister of Music. He's going to share a selection. We're going to go to Charlie Bubas live from Jamaica, y'all. We got Charlie Bubas from Jamaica that's going to share some dub poetry. And then we are going to close out with Brother Kofi and it's to, to ensure that we leave in peace. Welcome. Brutality. I'm 
Shay, all I could think about when I was hearing that, especially near the end, a minister okay. was, <laughs> was all, all, all the incredible things that the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey brought to, to life. You know, I mean, for us not to talk about the Black Star Line, for, not, for us not to talk about the Negro world, for us to not to talk about, you know, all of the different businesses that he established. You know, it's very critical. And, you know, we were sharing a lot of our own personal opinions of him, but there are a lot of facts. And the facts remain that from Jamaica, he brought himself 
to America looking for Booker T. Washington. Booker T. Washington wasn't around any longer. And he saw the plight of the people around the world. He saw the stress that we were going through, the pressures that we were going through. And he saw that we weren't emancipated. He saw that we were not free. And even though some law was passed that, that, that took physical chains of us, there were still mental chains on us. And, and, and so he gave us a doctrine, philosophies and opinions and plans and a direction and a black print for us to execute today, right now. And if we are operating outside of his philosophies, his opinions, his beliefs, then we are going to fall, find ourselves being subject back to captivity. And as you were playing that music, brother um, Adam, I was just hearing Black Star Line, and I was just and I was just thinking about the vision that he had for us to return back to Africa and claim what is ours. Africa for the Africans at home and the abroad. Even the Africans in Africa don't own, don't own Africa, all right? So it's up to us, those with the resources, those with the vision and the capabilities to be able to move forward, to be able to reclaim Africa for the Africans at home and abroad. So thank you for, for, thank you for giving us that incredible, that incredible contribution to this Marcus Garvey Day 2021 celebration. I'd like to now transition all the way from Canada to Jamaica. Brother Charlie Bobas. Charlie Bobas, you are up. Charlie Bobas. Bobas. Let me see the video, bro. Greetings. It's all about Charlie Bobas. Big up yourself, you know, do it, Lee. Great things they're doing over there. Rasta. No, Charlie Bobas, Inspirator International. Inspirator, tell them. Rasta, no, love we are spread. Rasta, no, I love we are spread. Rasta, no, them what for say we dead. Rasta, no, in my power head. Hey. We put the man after the traps and all they said. Hey. Rasta, no. Rasta, no, Mark. Yo, come on, Charlie Bubbles. Straight from Jamaica. A Charlie Bubbles. Bubbles. Yes, sir, tell him. Rasta, no, I love. We are spread. Rasta, no, them aim a power head. Rasta, no, them want to say we dead. Think we would the mad after the traps and all they said. One mission for reggae. The boy tree roots rock. Them looking for the message of love from jam rock. Philosophical ideas to maneuver the roadblock in times of sorrow. Listening lovers rock songs from childhood makes memories comes forth. Garnet silk and sizzler, them song bring comfort. Want it put you free. Now we look towards his concert. Love that living in prison, but building them own fort. Rasta, no, I love we are spread. Rasta, no, them aim a our head. Rasta, no, them want to see me dead. Think we would the mad after the traps and all they said. One mission, Rasta. No. Rasta, no. A Rasta, no. Not fashion, pretend, or fake Rasta. Lots of decisions for me. Watch for imposter Rasta. Remember when in school they never accepted Rasta? Watch the food we eat, mac and cheer Rasta. We spread positivity so they want to block. We wish they would take away the legacies of Marley. Can't exploit this lassie, Rastafari philosophy. Them can't stop Marcus Garvey. A Rasta, no, I love, we are spread. Rasta, no, them aim my power head. Rasta, no, them want to see me dead. Think we would have mad after the traps and all they said. 
not fashion. Pretend or fake rasta. Lots of decision to make. Watch for imposter rasta. Remember when in school them never accepted rasta. Them watch the food we eat. Mac and cheer rasta. We spread positivity so they want to block me. Which they could take away the philosophies of Marley. Can't explain the philosophies of Marcus Garvey. Garvey. Them can't stop so much from Healing Selassie, a Come Rasta, on. no, rasta. do it clean, a Rasta, no, the Black Starliner, no, what? a Marcos, no, <gasps> Yo. Rasta, no, let's think up economically, get your own nice and plan, your own sense, Come Rasta. On. No, philosophical it is to it. The benefits we have to share with humanity. Rasta, no. A Rasta, no. A Rasta, no. Charlie, Bobosa, tell them. A Rasta, no. Wow. Yo, big up. Charlie Bobas, come on now, put your hands together. Here we are. Respect. Here we are. Respect. You don't know enough. I'm a Marcus Garvey. Charlie Bobas is here to spread his message and his word. You don't know. But if you use the experience and get stronger, learn from Marcus and the philosophies and teach the youth them about Marcus. Because the youths them nowadays that need to know more about Marcus do it. So I love what you're doing. Congratulations on launching the Emancipation Month and getting the proclamation and everything. It's a wonderful duty you're doing over there for Marcus, carrying on the name, the legacy of the UNIA. Blessing, 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 blessing. Very strong legacy of the UNIA you're carrying on. You know, do it. So I have yo, to pick you up. Yo, pick up yourself, oh. brother. Yo, yo, listen, King. Yo, I, listen, you, know, you already know what we've gone through, bro. You know, I, we already know what, you know what I mean? Like what we've gone through is a whole, is a whole different situation. We can't even get into it, man. But yo, I see your struggle. And but you, you tell you, you tell the people that you drop wisdom, bro. You say, listen, we got to be, we can't be bitter. We got to be better. Use your experience and get stronger. Don't yeah. sit around in regret any longer. Any longer. Be Come careful on. how you use your yeah. anger. anger. Let not the pain make your bitter just better. 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 Come on, man. Do Better. you be like you get in a fight? Yet you know, say you doing right. Is someone trying to hold you down for spite? Yet you know, say you doing right. Well, the Almighty put your purpose in sight. Then he will give you the strength and the might. You will have to learn from a drop or a flight. And remember, success not come overnight. overnight. Use your experience and get stronger. Longer. Don't sit around in regret any longer. longer. Be careful how you use your anger. 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 Not the pain make you bitter. Just just better, better. Tell ya, a natural part of success. success. You have to make mistake before you learn to do your best. Who no Come make on. mistake, no try nothing new yet. Most to live them whole life in regret. Aim low, reach it. Success them forget. Limit not yourself, just work and go and sweat. The Come seeds on. that you sow, what grow you will get. And the rain I go fall till the you and I a wet. Hey. Use better. your egg. Experience and get stronger, stronger, stronger. I tell them, do you feel like you get in a fight? Yet you know, say you doing right. right. Is someone trying to hold you down for spite? Yet you know, say you doing right. Well, the Almighty put your purpose in sight. Then He will give you the strength and the might. You'll have to learn from a drop or a flight. And remember, success not come overnight. Overnight. Experience. Yes, to be stronger. Marcus Yo. Garvey's success didn't come overnight. He's a no way, sir. Struggle. No way, sir. And listen, Black we are part... success now come overnight. Brother, we are part of his success. We Listen, he said, look for me in the whirlwind. Right? Look for look me in the whirlwind. Me. Look for me in the whirlwind. And so what I want to do coming is... Coming back. Everyone, yo, give it up from all the way from J.A., the land of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. Give it up for Charlie Bobas, y'all. 
bless the Lord. And watch this, and watch this, and watch this. Um, now, did you hear? Did you hear the guitar strum in the background? Yeah, mom, we hear the guitar. So, yo, man, we, so we must, we must do a duet with you and him too. We got a duet with Adam Solomon and the Dying Thief, and now we got to do a duet with Charlie Bubas. Yeah, man, definitely, I'm up for it. Absolutely, man. absolutely. That was that was absolutely incredible, man. Thank you, thank you, Adam and Solomon for joining for joining in. That. No, no, that was big time. That was big time. That's what we needed, man. And you know what? And that's what we have to do. Listen, we have listen, to understand man. that. Yeah. Listen, we have the opportunity to support one another. And when we yeah. see each other doing something good, that it's important that we lend our gifts to that good work that we see our brothers and sisters doing. Yes, sir. For real. That's important. Listen, you know, it's black often, collective strength. Too, we're not collective. Too often we sit back and watch people with their gift manifest themselves and, and, we, and you just think you're supposed to be a spectator. We are not supposed to be spectators and in in our brothers and sisters' success. We are supposed to be participants. We are supposed to help elevate them. So what Adam, the minister Adam did, he elevated that performance. And I want to thank you for that. And giving us and giving us a true a, a, a true um, example of what we need to do with our gifts. So, brother Charlie Bobas, I want to let you know that Respect. you also are a recipient of the Emancipation Month Marcus Garvey Award. This is going to you. We're going to send a flag out to JA for you. Um, you can add that to your to your growing resume of achievements and accomplishments. We see you. We we love you. Just like the Honorable Marcus beside Garvey, he, he came to Toronto and he left the impact. He left his presence and you too have came to Canada and left your impact. Um, I want to just, before we go to Brother Kofi to close out, I want to also acknowledge our sister, our dear sister, Sister Simone Corden. Are you there, Sister Simone? Bless it, love. Sister Simone. Yes, yes, I'm there. <laughs> okay, I'll say, I'll say. Well, Sister Simone is a member of the Toronto UNIA ACL. We meet each and every Tuesday and Thursday for the UNIA Versity meetings. Um, join our Facebook group. It's Toronto UNIA, um, UNIA ACL Toronto. Um, and you can you can get our, our the call-in number so you can participate. Hi, Simone. She, hey. Sister, Sister Simone. <laughs> she is also an Emancipation Month ambassador. She was present in Brampton um, when we cut, you know, cut basically we cut the ribbon and opened up Emancipation Park to the world. She was present there. Um, she was also um, present and an active participant um, in the historical UNIA ACL flag raising in Scarborough. That's One, right. Two. For the One very first time, for the uh, very first time in history. Um, the flag has been raised in Toronto. And so, Sister Simone, for your work and your support for Emancipation Month, for the UNIA ACL, but most importantly, the reason why you're receiving this award, Sister Simone, is because of your business venture, because of your business acumen and your commitment to help build a business, a vibrant Black community. So I want to just give you an opportunity to speak about Sim Honey and, um, you know, just really quickly about you know, the, uh, the, the, the black uh, money, um, you know what I mean, sis. Yes, <laughs> blackmoneysharing.com. Yes, so please. That, yes, that's a platform where we want to be able to close the circle when it comes to circulating the dollar in our community. So what we have, um, Sim Honey, in partnership with some other wonderful black owned initiatives, we've come together to produce a site where you can get reward, incentive, and um, a social boost uh, for a community when you buy Black. So when you're shopping Black, there's a way to be able to get rewards, similar to how you would get air miles, or you would do something like Canadian tire money. Uh, we have a way where you can be rewarded for um, looking for what you want and making sure that you're getting it from a Black-owned source. So you would go over to um, black, blackmoneysharing.com. The registration, the membership is free 
So you just do your registration. If you're an organization, self-employed, if you have a business, you can let us know about that too in the registration. And then from there, uh, you do get um, the membership, which entails you now requesting what you want through the platform. And when you do find what you want, uh, we'll give you some selections for black owned businesses in your area to select your item or your service. And when you do get it through the plat platform, then you'll be rewarded. Every $5, you'll get um, a rebate or money back that would go into a virtual wallet. And we also do a monthly sharing. So really it's just the basics of having a collective um, work and responsibility and cooperative economics approach to getting us back to where we need to be. Thanks. Link, please put that link in the um, in the chat, please, um, because obviously people need to learn more about it. Um, you know, Marcus Garvey is all about Black independence, and we finally have a business platform um, where we can start investing our money. We can start receiving, you know, business and marketing support. Um, but also, you know, as Black consumers we now could find a way to do business with black businesses. It's an incredible search engine. All you have to do is type in what you're looking for um, as, a, as a consumer, and they will actually help you find every find black businesses that can service your every need. So please or give that website. You'll get, she'll get um, a rebate or find black businesses that can service your every need. So please or give that website. Or she'll get um, a rebate or find black businesses that can service your every need. So please give that website. Or I still get um, a rebate or find black businesses that can service your every need. Well, that's where. So please give that website. Or I still get. I think um, I said some key words there. <laughs> Maybe Zoom can I mean, handle it. <laughs> I mean, that was too powerful. Okay. <laughs> All right, I shape, I shape. So congratulations, Sister Simone. Congratulations, um, Brother Charlie Bobas. Um, and now we are going to go to our final recipient and our final speaker for the night. Um, we're going to turn the microphone over um, to Brother Kofi Morris, um, who was the final recipient of this 2021 Emancipation Month Marcus Garvey's Award. Um, this brother um, is a pioneer and a guru when it comes to being able to get settle yourself um, to find yourself and to and to really heal yourself, um, he has been instrumental in Emancipation Month ceremonies in the in the past. Um, at Queens Park, we actually had a very powerful ceremony where we had the Honorable Jean Augustine and many others present with us, um, was under you know un taking his um, guidance um, in self discovery and self meditation. So we are going to close um, this event with him. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Kofi if you're there. Greetings, greetings, family. Can you hear me? Do I do it? I can hear you. Yes, sir. Okay, beautiful. Um, just calling calling upon our elders in this moment. Um, the importance, you know. Um, I'll ask whether um, Norman Norman Otis Richmond, if you're still there, if I may have permission to speak. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. All the work you've continued to do for our people, brother Norfolk Carey, um, Elder Louie, I know he may not be on the line, but all of our elders that continue to, to really create space for us and, and, and uh, maintain the teachings of our ancestors. So I got the, the call very late, so I'm at 2% on my phone, but I will apologize in advance if, any, if, if at any point it cuts out. But I'm going to ask everyone at this point um, to close your eyes wherever you are in this moment. And I want you to envision us together um, as we normally would be together in a space. And because we have vision as African people, we have the ability to create this and make this manifest. As I'm sitting here under the stars and under the moon, the same moon that our ancestors used to navigate the seas, the same moon and the same stars that we use to navigate to our freedom and the same moon and the same stars that we continue right now in this present day to look up at as we remember our, our great legacy of the Honorable Marcus Mazzaia Garvey. I want you to envision all of us holding hands right now in a space as we normally would close our events and gatherings, holding hands and connecting with one another. And if you could envision someone else on the call right now standing beside you and you're holding their hand 
and in their hand, the blood that's running through their veins is the same blood of our ancestors who guided us and strengthened us and empowered us. And each and every time you feel you feel challenged and you feel like you know you can't go on, you feel like this this the space that we're living in is, is challenging you. Just remember that that same blood of strength and empowerment that's running through your veins, that's connecting to the hand of that person that's beside you, um, is part of that ancestral lineage. So as you're with your eyes closed, envisioning holding this space right now, I want you to envision us in the future. I want you to bring yourself, you could say 10 years, 20 years into the future. I want you to envision the kind of community that we want for our children, the kind of community where we're visiting our children's businesses. Our children are speaking on microphones. Our children are representing our people. Our children are in, in positions of power in government. Our children are running these airwaves because it's the seeds that we're planting in them now and it's gonna allow them to, to do these things that we're envisioning. So as you're seeing this healthy community of African people where we honor our elders and we lift up our children knowing that there are, they are our returning ancestors and we're seeing the health of our village and sitting in that feeling right now, feeling that feeling in your bones, feeling that feeling in your blood, wanting to acknowledge and envision the spirit of one of your favorite ancestors that you call and you calling upon their energy and them opening up the way for this vision that you have, knowing that they're the ones that open up the way for the work that we do here in the physical, in our, in their, in our physical flesh, asking them to not only open up the way, but seeing them opening up the way for us in order to be successful and seeing our children and our children's children doing this work that we envision and now we're holding each other's hands as we're closing this event together with our children and with our children's children and they're smiling, looking up at us, thanking us for the doors we've opened up for them. And we're looking to our elders, thanking them for the path that they've paved. And we're thanking them for the work that they've done, letting them know it was not done in vain. And in our closing in this moment, we just wanna give thanks for this space Thanking Brother DeWitt and his family, blessing his family, blessing the families of all those who are guiding and supporting this work. Now all of our elders who continue to open up the way for us. I want to call their names now. As my phone can go anytime, I'll ask you at this point to call those names of those ancestors who you wish to call. And we'll close the call with these, with these names. And I'll call upon Sister Sharona Hall. We say Ashe, and we'll continue calling names. Terry Brown. The Honorable Akua Walcott. Ashe. The Honorable Marcus Besire Garvey. Ashe. Malcolm X. Minister Milton Malcolm X. Milton. Ashe. Ashe. The Honorable Marcus Besire Garvey. Ashe. I am Ashe. Malcolm X. Minister Malcolm X. Milton. Ashe. Ashe. Milton. Ashe. 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 Mother Harriet Tubman. Honorable Harriet Tubman. Mother Harriet Tubman. Al Prentice Bunchy Carter. Shay. Al Pomex. Shay. Madiba. Shay. Jomo Kenyatta. Bob Marley. Shay. To start over to her. Brother Rashika. Brother Rashika. Shay. Glories in Polo. Shay. Brother Rashidi. I see. Dr. Aiwa Africa. I see. And all those in our hearts and our minds who spit animating peace. We thank them. We thank them. We thank them. And we envision that we're pouring this water. We're pouring this alcohol onto the earth. And we're clapping all together. We're clapping. Giving thanks. Yeah, I see. And I'll pass it back. 
to brother do it. Gun loss. Gun loss. Gunly loss. Gun loss. Up you mighty race, you accomplish what you will. I'm in Calopez, because Sakara. Muammar al Gaddaf. Huey Percy Newton. We can't hear you. I said Huey, Huey P. Newton. Harry P. Newton. Thank you for sharing that. You know, and, and Harry P. Newton actually has some history in Brampton. We actually, there, there was a, there's a, there's a, a art gallery now that used to be a prison in Brampton. And that was actually for one night. Huey P. P. Newton was was locked there, and so we pay tribute to all of our answers that have traveled all over the world. And I was just saying that I'm here at the Underground Railroad site, as you can see right behind me. This is Michigan Street Baptist Church. It's very dark, so I'm sorry you can't see it, but it's the site of an Underground Railroad. And I'm just pouring that water for our libation for our ancestors. I'm going to thank you all for joining us um, on this Marcus Garvey Day. 2021 celebration. I want to congratulate all the award recipients. And in true UNIA fashion, it is time for us to close. And close, we close always with our motto. Brother Dean, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. You ready? You ready, brother? Okay, brother. Yeah. Well, make sure everyone else is ready. I'm ready. Is everyone else ready? Ready. Ready, bro. One God. One God. One God. One aim. One aim. One, aim. One destiny. One destiny. Africa for the African, those at Afri home and those abroad. Africa for the Africans, those at home and those abroad. Race first. Race first. Have a God bless you all. Be well. Yeah. Peace and love. Stay strong. One love. love. I mean, I said, I found this.